either have or will cover other parts of this franchise and this video either is or will be linked below. I'm not going to restate here what I did or will say in the other video. These videos get long enough as it is. Put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. Action Man Operation Extreme Video Game Review. It's just gonna get the timer. There we go. Starting with the plot. Now the plot follows a mission by Action Man to stop Mr. X. I'm sorry, Dr. X. He didn't spend six years in evil medical school to be called Mr. Thank you very much. From taking over the world, of course. Using, among other things, all of them devised by mad science, an army of skull bots, which are, of course, robots. With, yeah, this kind of skull, yeah. And the game also features villains Professor Gangrene and Max X. Now, let's see. Each and every level gradually builds more onto Dr. X's plan. And really, there's, I would say there's one level where you don't really feel like progress. But other than that, every time you come a little closer to fully defeating him and yeah, I'm probably never going to stop picking on Max Payne 3. Max, games like Max Payne 3 really could learn from this. Make sure that every level forwards the plot, leaves you feeling like you accomplished something. And... And the game actually does a really good job of just starting very small, because this is a game... At the end of the day, the, the overall plan is, I suppose complex is a little excessive of a word, but there are several moving parts to the plan, and the game could very easily open on an unwieldy exposition dump explaining everything. But instead, literally the first thing the game tells you is just, Dr. X's forces are driving around the city stealing laboratory equipment. Boom, you, and then you start the first level. You know, there's a little bit more. Then, then the, the, the villain of the level, you know, talks villain speak at you a little, and Action Man narrates that he's got to do this and that. But you don't get any more information. And that's, I mean, yeah, you've, you're in a car with weapons, and the bad guys are driving around town stealing. Obviously, you're going to go stop them. And... Over the course of the game, it gradually builds this overall plot. And and that's also, in addition to stopping something, again, with the exception of, with one level as an exception, every single level, you're also gradually finding out more. And it is this very organic, it's not unique to this game, but it is this very organic thing of you go to a place, in that place they're doing one specific part of the overall plot. They're, they're working on something and when you go there you find out what they're doing and you maybe you know throw a wrench into the you know equipment and 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 yeah like that you gradually find out and yeah you know the, the other than replaying this some months back I had I had actually forgotten because it had been years since I last played this. I'm not sure why either, but the why it had been so long. But the the basically I I realized that, you know, I, I remembered the overall 
plan, basically, uh, but I didn't remember that it only gradually told you like that. And this is, I mean, there are, there are a lot of games and cartoons and stuff like this that just have way too much exposition right up front. And like, either you super get into it or you're kind of lost and, you know, and, and, you know, as as a kid wanting to get into stuff like this, you you are willing to take in a lot of information right there. But it does have a greater effect if you only gradually find out. And every cutscene is in engine, and moving on from stuff that's about this game for this section. If if you wanna, if you don't wanna hear anything that isn't about this game, just skip to the next. The section. A few months back, I decided I wanted to see if Satara Core would run since it's been years upon years since I last played it, and it looked like it would work. I know from experience, I, I tried it on a different PC than my current one, and the game crashed right after winning the first fight. And yeah, I, you know, I played two and just passed the first fight, and it didn't crash. And I am so thrilled that I played it for just, you know, maybe two minutes, testing the run at least that long, because I learned something playing it that I don't want to. Man, I just, I forgot. Battles take ages, even from early on. Your character moves so slowly and you have to walk almost everywhere. There are a ton of other issues with it. I don't want to spend forever getting into them here. I, I talked about some of them in my own video, and I also noted that at least one of the GOG.com reviews were just absolutely spot on about a ton of the issues, but just, yeah, you know, sometimes you just forget. That's one of the few, I tend, <coughs> excuse me, I tend not to be overly nostalgic about games. I tend to remember the good and the bad, but in that case, I completely forgot all the bad. There, again, there is good, but yeah. Now, um. This is where I get political, again, not at all game really, just skip to the next subject if you don't want to hear it. TYT pointed out in a video about cops chanting whose street are whose streets are streets, which isn't a fascistic thing to chant at all. See, if if if, if it was a gang, it would be them saying, you know, if any other gang messes with us, we're gonna get violent. When it's police chanting that the streets belong to them, not the citizens. That's fascistic, but yeah, you know, yeah, they pointed out on college campuses, liberals often try to prevent non-liberal speakers from speaking on campus. I agree that that's counterproductive. It lets them play victim, which is one of the favorite things for, to do for Republicans, of course. But when these liberals fight rape apologists, among others, they are responding to the threat that they will be raped, which is a big problem on college campuses and that it won't be punished, rape apologism has caused that for decades. It's slowly getting at least a little better, so any rape apologist that speaks publicly is a real threat. I wish that they, you know, would, you know, not, not prevent them from speaking, but that is, you know, the explanation why. And I'm not saying all of them are rape apologists, but all of them are arguing for awful things happening to innocent people, and Fighting to get to do that and doing it are, of course, the absolute favorite thing for Republicans to do. And Young Turks also said, like, you know, I'll just get Trump a G.I. Joe kit. That's ridiculous. Get him an Action Man kit. And the alt-right are now crying about J-Law. And T.Y.T. pointed out that they're just upset they can't have sex with her. And fittingly, not ironically, Mother has at least has one character try to pick her up and getting all insulting towards her when she turns him down. So, yeah. You know, I, I wouldn't have said that's the alt-right before the alt-right started crying about her. But, yeah, now, you know, they, they turned themselves into that... Yeah. Now, let's see. Tone. And that's the tone of this review, not of the game. Existentialist warning. Skip to next subject if you hate stuff like that. 
As I said in the said in the last Action Man game review, I love the figures, though I no longer have any, and these games are really guilty pleasures of mine. I will go into the negatives of this, as I did on that one. I do in all my reviews. But yes, I have changed my tone recently. I used to rant, get really angry. No, not always. But I don't want to be a negative person. I only want to get angry when it's to prevent bad things from happening to innocent people. I don't want to rant every time I find a bad game or movie. You know, when I hit 30, I had a third of the way through life crisis. I realized that for 30 years, I've been that guy who gets angry about stuff like stuff that you shouldn't get that angry about. It doesn't matter that much if a game or a movie sucks, unless it's in a way that promotes something bad in real life. And I stopped to think, why have I been getting so angry? And it's a thing other people put on me. I will never understand why other people are so eager to misunderstand who I am and what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's intentional, but I'm not going to waste so much effort setting the record straight anymore. Better? Bit who? Anyway, no. And I'm going to be me, not someone other people think I am. Other people looked at me and saw an angry guy who gets angry about movies and games. I'm not naturally an angry person. I obsess about games and movies, yes, but it's because I love the mediums. You know, creative expressions up there with political action, food, and other sense experiences. When they're done right, they can make life feel amazing. And just, yeah, the... the And, and I do think that that did come through in a number of my older videos that on some level I kind of want to sell you on, even if you don't end up wanting to watch or play the thing I'm reviewing, I do kind of want you to understand why something in it is amazing. You know, and when, when I think to my review of Evolva, which at the end of the day is not that good of a game, I spend a lot of that video talking about the really great things about it, and I stand by those things. And then at the end, I just briefly say, well, this, this, and this is bad, and overall, I guess the game's bad. And that kind of is how I feel about these things, you know, and, and today I want to spend more time going into the negatives, because at the end of the day, if you don't want to hear the negatives, just skip to another part of the video. But the... Yeah, it's, it's you know, and, and if you don't want to hear the negatives at all, then, you know, my channel is not for you. But the, yeah, I, I want to talk about the really great stuff about it. And I will also say, you know, in some of my older, I, I kind of vacillate back and forth. You know, when I reviewed the the fourth Resident Evil movie, Afterlife, you know, I was pretty stoked on them. Same same thing for Three Musketeers, both of which are, of course, Paul W. Sanderson movies. Then when I reviewed the fifth one, Retribution, Resident Evil Retribution, I was very, you know, I, f I focused very much on the negatives. But then when I more, excuse me. Then when I more recently reviewed the 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 sixth movie the final chapter. Yeah, I focused on, May, you know, I, I enjoyed that movie because I decided I'm not gonna just sit and hate this movie. And yeah, there are actually things about retribution even that are fun. You know, what I, I will say, you know, that movie is a slog. But anyway, yeah, I just, I, yeah, and that's also, I mean, if you, if you don't, you know, if, if you're not, like, really looking to have fun with the Resident Evil movies, for example, and I'm not saying, you know, you're not wrong not to like them, but if, if you know, if you sit down and say, I am going to enjoy this, and you're like, and, and it is the kind of thing that you would enjoy in general, yeah, most of them you can enjoy at least somewhat, and... Yeah, I mean, if, if you just, you know, if, if you want to, to know, are they, you know, good or bad movies, yeah, they're, they're mostly, you know, they're, they're very, very average, and some of them bad, you know, but instead of spending a long time 
going into just that, you know, I want to talk about the stuff that's fun with it. And, you know, then when there are things that there is nothing fun about, I will talk about that. And, and I do, I mean, I try to avoid games or movies that I don't think are going to be any fun at all. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, today I think I did actually forget clearing my throat before pressing record. Now. And there we go. On plot. In Danish, this is called Mission Extreme, not Operation Extreme. I think I, I think I said it right at the start of this interview, yeah. Which is all, always, you know, that took me a while to really understand because I've only ever seen the, yeah, you know, my own copy, which does have the English language, you know, recording. So, yeah, but evidently, you know, outside of Denmark, it is called Mission, Operation Extreme, sorry. And yeah, every time I like do a, an internet search for it, you know, not Google, but Start Page, of course, since they don't, you know, monitor, yeah, the, the, yeah, every time it's like, oh, mission extra, I guess, I guess this is it. Now, Action Man, it, the Alex Man version, which is the only one, only one I know anything about at all, which, again, like I said in the other one, is not very much, is basically James Bond reimagined from a suave British channel. Excuse me. <coughs> reimagined from a suave British gentleman to an American extreme sports enthusiast. Gadgets, some hidden in briefcases, spycraft, supervillain enemies, you know, seen behind a pane of glass sending robots at you, or maybe they're sitting in their, you know, the, like this this chair and talking villain speak at you and you know with with like hidden elevators so that they can escape very quickly and stuff like that you know you have to work you have to find and work your way through hidden island bases engage in high-speed chases with vehicles on both sides okay you know that that may look normal in early levels or you know, military or rich portion toy -y, extreme sporty in later levels. Maybe not so much extreme sporty, but but anyway, in later levels on the surface, but actually hide machine guns, missile launchers, and the like. Now you don't actually engage in extreme sports in this much at all. In one level, you enter the area by I want to say it's called skydiving. You know, with the 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 wings and it, yeah. But then you do tons of extreme sports in Raid on Island X, so it would be a retread in this if you did. Some of the official pages are still up, you know, like the in the manual it says, you know, go to this page and this page. Some of them are still up, not all of them, but it's just info on where to buy the action figures, and, you know, nothing about the, the games, which, yeah, they. I'm not surprised they can still sell the action figures because those are awesome, but. You know, people aren't gonna. People aren't, you know, massing to to stores to buy a PSX game, you know, and there probably isn't much money in like an HD remake of this. And yeah. Now, one thing this game has is way too many briefings. You know, in a lot of this game, the moment your objective changes slightly, you get a briefing. You know, thankfully you can skip it and skip it being read aloud. You don't have to, and you don't have to read it yourself. Just keep clicking X and it'll go back to the game. I suppose I should, yeah, I'll also put in the title. This is the PSX version of the game. I think it maybe was released for PC also. I, I can imagine that. But yeah, you know, it'll go back to the game, but yeah, the, the, you, you know how you'll go in a game and you will reach an area and that was where you were, thought you were going to do a thing, but oh, the bad guy's already left, so you have to find them. You know, in most games, it'll just be the, the character narrative, you know, yeah, you'll just get a brief, like, oh, they must have left, you have, you know, well, proceed in this direction, you should catch up to them. In this, the game will pause and there'll be this big screen. You know, really, 
if if a character is speaking in this, the game is paused or it's a cutscene or something, which is also the game paused. You know, the, the game is paused during cutscenes. It's not like more recent games where a cutscene will play but you can move during, you know. So yeah, it it genuinely just has the The, yeah, the, it, it's constantly stopping the game. For this gets better in the later levels, but early on it's ridiculous. You know, you get to a switch, even if it's the same as a switch you just pressed, and it'll pause and tell you what the switch does. It's ridiculous. You know, not every single switch, but like there's early on, there's this. You know, you have to. You you have to press a few switches to drain the water of a place you have to enter. And there's also this, you know, you have to swim through these areas where, like, water is being let out at a fairly high pressure. And it's too high of a pressure for you to swim against. So you have to press other switches that temporarily, you know, turn the lower the pressure or something like that, you know, and in at least one of them, it'll like go from you pressing the switch, the camera will pan over, you'll see, okay, it's this body of water, as you can see, the water is now running slower, you know, but some of the time it'll also pause and then say, this switch has decreased the pressure of, and there's no way to turn these off, you can't tell the game like you can't change the the degree the the frequency of these and yeah now briefly from the action man wiki there have been a few action man game action man video games which were released alongside the toy line presumably to help the toy line along in sales and increase action man's popularity and yeah, the yeah to just briefly go through the the villain character. You know, basically, Doctor X is the big bad, and then like he has these lieutenants that handle specific sections. You know, and and it's also actually you're told right from the start that this is Dr. X is doing because Professor Gangrene is involved in what's happening in the first level and Professor Gangrene works for Dr. X. But you don't actually meet Dr. X for a little while, you know, face to face. You don't hear him speak, which makes his appearance more, you know, have more weight. And yeah, you know, Professor Gangrene, Max X, if you, if I just read the name, I wouldn't realize that it's apparently supposed to be, un unless they're always saying it wrong in this game, but the name is spelled Max with two X's, you know, M-A-X-X, -X, but every time they say the name, they say Max X, so, yeah, Who, who's basically, like, yeah, to, to just briefly, you know, Dr. X is like, he's got the, the you know, the, the evil goatee, you know, he's got these really intense eyes, he's got this robot arm, and, you know, he's he's got the, the X logo on, you know, his, his clothing and such, and Gangrene has this green, just wild hair, and and not very many hairs either, he's mostly bald, and they're, they're sticking out in different, like, like he just touched one of those you know, magnetic things that make your hair sting, and he's got these wild eyes and kind of pale skin. He probably doesn't get enough sun, and you know, with all this mad science that he's doing, and at the, you know, and and he's got like a lab coat and such. And Max X, I don't know if if this is because of something like. You know, and, and I don't know what the explanation is, but I don't know if they watch like Dark Man. I was like, that's a cool design, but he's got the Dark Man. You know, not not the disfigured, or not as, as far as we see at least, but he's got the bandages covering his face, 
and like again really intense eyes and just yeah really 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 badass and again maybe it's probably explained like on one of the shows or something but yeah he's probably like a science experiment went wrong and like destroyed his skin or something but it is it's these really great like the moment you see these guys you know okay that's evil that's definitely in this character is evil because of the the appearance and comparatively like when you see action man like he's he's clearly one of the good guys and yeah and yeah among the lieutenants are toxica the <laughs> the the speedster who's like just this stereotypical like teenager like he's basically he talks a lot like 90s kid you know and the this game is for kids and yeah kids find teenagers obnoxious a lot of the, so yeah, especially that kind of like he literally yeah, the the way he talks, it's it's completely like that. And you know, there's the the technician who's like this. He's got these like glasses and like like sci-fi futuristic kind of glasses. And he's like he's building robots, and he's got this cold way of talking and just yeah. And I don't know if these lieutenants were toys. I remember, you know, Action Man. And Dr. X, I think Professor Gangrene, but I don't remember all, you know, I certainly don't remember the other ones, but certainly Max X would make for a compelling toy. You know, kids in the 90s, you know, seeing this, you know, the the eyes and then the, the bandages around his, his face. And they probably also were on the show, which, you know, where it's explained, but yeah. And that's, again, in this... I never watched the show. I had no problem following the story of this game. You know, you can pick up everything you need to know. It doesn't act like you should know things from, you know, just, yeah, just as a quick example, I'm not saying this is a bad thing about that game, but recently I tried reinstalling the Alias game, unfortunately. I couldn't. I really would have liked to play that again, but you know, if you only play that game, you won't have any idea what's going on. These, you know, these are characters who were introduced in the show and that you, you know, yeah, the, and the game is set in a very specific time of, of the, the show and, yeah, and, and, you know, people didn't buy that game expecting to, you know, people who bought that game were fans of the show, of course, but still, you know, if, yeah, let's say that, let's say that someone for some, you know, just picked up the game, maybe they didn't know there was a show, you know, as a kid, I, I only found out in more recent years that there was an Action Man show, I didn't, I thought there was just the toys and the video games, but, you know, when, when I did some, some research on, you know, either this or a Raid on Island X, but yeah, you know, I found out, oh, there was a show. Okay, never watched any of it, and you know, but yeah, you know, if if you picked up Alias the game, you wouldn't be able to follow it. In this, you you can, and you know, wait, Raid on Island X, I already talked about that in that video. Now, and you know, in, in this game, you can actually look up outfits that aren't in the game, and I guess to advertise the toys that look like that, you know, it's, it is strange that it only, it then only show, shows the, the toy in appearance, none of the items that come with, because I, I do remember there were, you know, a lot of the figures had at least some like stuff that comes with and you know for some of it it's stuff you put on like the head and and such and on the when when you look up the outfit in this the the you know that stuff is on his head but like if he maybe had a knife i i i want to say there was one that you could like put in water and he would like kind of float and i think you can maybe also make him 
do swim motions. He had like a knife. And, you know, there's, yeah, there's no knife in any of these, you know, anyway. And when you scroll through stuff, you can see in the main menu, you know, it needs to load the appearance of those you look at, but it doesn't start loading until you press X. So if you're looking for a specific one, you're not forced to see the ones load that you're scrolling past. I really like that. I, I wish more games would do that. And this this game uses vibration great. You know, the it'll vibrate when you take damage, when you land from a jump, when you make progress, when something heavy moves near you. Like it makes the ground shake slightly, and some of the time that is what it does. When anything explodes, and this is each time, even if there are a lot of explosions within a short space of time. And there are like times in this where you're like setting off explosives, or you're defeating something big. And it'll explode over and over like four or five times within a, a few seconds. It's awesome. And honestly, this is one of those games that just replays better than it plays. It's, once you know how to correct for bad design decisions, it plays a lot smoother. Where early on, yeah, you know, the first time you run into a bad design decision, you, you have to... Yeah, you know, either you, you start to figure out how to play around that, or you stop playing, basically. And, yeah, once you've, once you've completed an entire level where there's a bad at least one bad design decision that's really hampering the way you play, the next time you play that level, you're going to have more of an idea of... Also because when you're dealing with bad design decisions, it can kind of make a, a, a game feel like endless because you're constantly putting in all this effort that you shouldn't have to you know we're not talking about games that are just challenging we're talking about like I'm, I'm gonna get into specifics but yeah when you legitimately have to play around a bad design decision yeah it can make a game feel absolutely endless because of it now Length. There we go. Now, I tried to get every single PowerPoint, and I actually, I got all but one. And I, I looked for that last one, but I just couldn't quite find it. But I didn't replay any of the levels. Not in parts, not the whole, not at all. I have played this game countless times, and I will countless times more, and have on hold on some games on some playthroughs gotten every single PowerPoint. And the let's see, and, but but yeah, you know my my the the time it took me is to be considered as you know I knew where to go and what to do, so it took less because of that. And note that. If you look up how many PowerPoints you've collected, it displays a count for every level, including the ones you haven't gotten to yet, spawning their names and how many there are. Which is strange, since it doesn't do this when you look up enemies, excuse me, vehicles and such. Now, on this playthrough, getting every PowerPoint except the one took me seven and a half hours. And on the on the last playthrough I did a few months ago, which is you know, I'm glad that I did both playthroughs for comparison. Yeah, without going for getting all PowerPoints, just going through it, you know, not not rushing, but not stopping to get power not not covering every single <coughs> every single area. <coughs> Excuse me. To get every single PowerPoint, I could do it in four hours, so that's a pretty good amount of time you know, extra time that, that you get for getting every single PowerPoint. And, you know, this is unlike, say, TMNT, which is, again, I, a game I love. You know, you can actually get everything in a single playthrough. You don't have to replay every level at least once just for coins, which, you know, just makes the game seem longer than it is when, really, 
you know, that is a game you can complete in a very short space of time. But then you have to play back through every single level if you want to get the coins. And if you never get the coins, you don't get any of the cool unlockables. And that is something that is very much appreciated about that game. If you work really hard, you can actually get every single unlockable. And the unlockables are a lot of fun. And it's one of those where you get to choose what to unlock when. If you have the coins to unlock a thing, you can unlock it. It doesn't matter if you've unlocked other things like it or... Yeah, greatly appreciated. Camera and controls. Now... Let's see... The... Yeah, when, when you're running through levels, the camera will kind of move around and it's one of those games where the controls change based on where the, you know, if you, if, if you press the down arrow, then he will move down, whether that's to his left or right whether it's, you know, actually something that is in front of him, you know, whatever, depending on where the camera is. And this is, this gets especially bad with when, th there are a few times where you have to make jumps, and some of them are even double jumps, and yeah, the camera will move part of the way, and yeah, basically you have to play around it, you have to you you once you know that the camera is going to turn you're more ready to adjust what arrow you're pressing and doing so the camera won't have you going in the wrong direction at all but the first time you play that yeah you know it might take you and you might fail a few times before you realize there's nothing i can do to prevent the camera from moving, I have to know to, to when to move and how to move to go with it, you know. And yeah, once you know how to play around it, it's not that big of an issue, but until you get to that point, it will irritate you, and it's also, there aren't that many of these jumps, and it's not that bad, but the first time you run into something like that, it's going to make you think, is the whole game like this? And again, make you want to stop. But yeah, and the, yeah, the double jump, it's, you know, it's that typical completely, the, 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 you know, laws of physics define mid-air double jump. And it can also let you reach higher areas, and it's, it's faster than the climbing vaulting, and Vaulting and climbing sometimes has you fall off where you were climbing. It, it helps to move in the direction you were vaulting, but the camera can make you mess that up. And yeah, the, the double jumping is always faster. The, the one thing about the double jumping, as opposed to vaulting, is that sometimes you might go too far with the double jump, and sometimes it might you know, there, there are times where, let's say, I, I'm here, up, the, up here are, you know, is, is a short section which, among other things, has at least one power, a yeah, single power point. So I jump from where I am up there, but I don't hit the power point, so I don't pick that up, and I go over the, the thing and land off on the other side there would have made more sense to just vault and walk into the, the PowerPoint, yeah. Now, and the, yeah, the swimming, thankfully there's very little swimming, but the swimming does kind of have that, that issue that, yeah, you know, the, it's, it's slower, yeah, you know, the, the camera will move, it's slower and it's more limited movement and I that's also something I really appreciate about this game you will almost never be attacked by an enemy while you're in water because 
you can't fight back from in the water and you can't very quickly get away which you know some of the enemies you'll you know a lot of the enemies you'll want to fight some of them you will just want to run away and yeah swimming you can't do that very well and that's also a thing you will never fight an enemy while you swim in the water while you swim which again greatly appreciate because it would be really abrupt unless it was like super easy which a lot of the fighting is but yeah and But, yeah, you know, it also makes the, you know, the, the double jump especially can be extremely useful for getting away from enemies, like, you know, f because they, they run as fast as you, there are always more enemies than, you know, you're only you, and there, you know, there will very frequently be more than one enemy, and sometimes you just have to get away from them. And yeah, the double jump is especially useful for that. And that's again where the, the camera moving can really screw that up. Now, yeah, and the, the vehicle control is also, you know, Yeah, I shouldn't give away too many details, but there are, you know, it's fine when it's land vehicles. The, 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 then there's aerial vehicles, which is also the, where the, the controls get kind of slippery, the, the or controls, the, the, it feels like you're slipping, gliding, and the, you know, and then there's one where you're, on and underwater, and when you're on the water, there's a lot of ice, which makes it very slippery, and yeah, that's very frustrating. And and it's again, I I really appreciate that the vehicle levels are as short as they are, because otherwise they would get really bad. If the the majority of this game is, or maybe it just feels like it, but but a lot of this game is the third-person perspective segments of third-person shooter, I said, yeah, let's go with that. And those are much more comfortable, the, the controls are more responsive, and, you know, you're never slippy, slipping or gliding in, in one of those. Now, and there's also the you know, the, the slippery stuff gets annoying in the sections where something is very narrow and there are a number of those in vehicle levels now and you can you know mostly the camera will move without you really you know as you move but you can also stand still and control the camera and basically you know you can you can pan it 360 degrees around you and you know you don't have to pan that much and the moment you let go of the button the camera goes back to normal so that's also it's not something where it's not one of those games where you have to make sure the camera is behind you you know you don't have to center view uh, manually the the game will do that the moment you or you know yeah the, the camera will go back to where it was the moment you let go of that button so you're not stuck doing that I, I forget is it maybe medieval that's a little annoying with that where if you leave the camera somewhere else then you the the camera will just stay like that for a while. I, I forget but yeah and the pan can be very useful if there are enemies in front of you, but not right in front of you. And you want to make sure you've gotten them. And, you know, do note, you can't aim from it, but the auto-aim does work there. And you can shoot while doing it. It's, it's the only thing at all you can do while you're panning the camera is also shoot. And, you know, like, get your gun out and put, you know, holster and unholster your weapon, but that's it. You can't otherwise move at all. 
and I'm almost certain you can't switch weapons there. But again, just let go of the button, switch weapon, and then press the button, hold the button again. And moving on, third person segments. Yeah, that's what I'm going to go with. There are, you know, there are some vehicle levels and then there are some third person segment levels. And because of the order of them and the way, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to give that away, but because of that, you get a really cool, easy to get into opening to the game and a really satisfying conclusion to the game. Because ultimately, the vehicle levels are much, much easier to just, you immediately know, you know, where to go and what to do. Because in the vehicle levels, really, you're just, you're told to get from point A to point B, shoot someone either along the way or, you know, at point A or point B, and that's it. You know, where in the regular levels, you're using equipment, you've, you know, you've got to deal with the weapons, you've got all this stuff. And, again, I, I greatly prefer the third-person segments, but, yeah, the, the, again, like I said, first level, you know, you've, you, you're in this really awesome car, which has weapons on it. You're told you have to stop these guys from stealing. You know, nobody, you know, it's, it's such a nice, I mean, I mean, they could have made it something more, some something worse, but it does. You know, as as you progress through the game, you understand what they were stealing for. But everybody's against stealing. You know, you tell a child, "These guys are stealing. Go stop them." You know, immediately, let kids. Yeah, I don't, you know, nobody likes thieves. You know, so just you know, uh, except for when you're playing as one and, and controlling Garrett, obviously. But it's it's yeah. Now. Let's see. Martial arts. Now, the the martial arts do feel kind of underdeveloped. Basically, you know, you can be killed by two or three weak, and really, that's what I wrote, really, one is basically, now I suppose there has to be more than one, but if they all get close enough, you know, they, they can keep you from moving away from them due to the fact that you cannot fire a weapon when the enemy is close enough for you to hit with your bare hands. You know, if if you do press the attack key, which is the same for whether you're punching, whether you're using martial arts or firing a weapon, it is the, the X key. And it's, you know, whether you've holstered or unholstered your weapon usually is what determines whether you're firing a weapon or you know, punching, but yes, you know, he will punch if they're close enough for you to punch them. He will never fire the weapon in, in that instance. You know, the, the only way to fire a weapon where when an enemy is very close is to be using your long range weapon, your sniper weapon. And yeah, that's, that's not something you do very often. But yeah, you know, I, he might even punch even if they're a little too far away to, to hit. And, you know, if you, yeah, if you have a gun out and, and you press attack and they're close enough for you to punch, he will put the gun away and then punch. I really hate when games put away the gun. With, you know, I, t I talked about this in Just Cause 3 as well in my video on that. Let the player decide when to put the weapon away. But, you know, basically, as long as nobody puts Action Man in a corner, 
you know, then then he won't be completely out of luck. But you know, there's this one time where I realized you the the way to get through this area is basically run away from the enemies, and I mean bolt, double jump, then turn the 180 degrees as fast as you can, and you'll still barely be able to in time. Turn, use your first person perspective, long ranged weapon, you know, the, the, there are a couple, you know, sniper, a crossbow, compact bow, you don't get to choose which it is. The, you know, he'll, he'll bring one, you know, into the mission, and the reason that there are several different ones and that he'll bring one on, you know, he'll bring the sniper on one mission or the crossbow on another is that they wanted to sell more toys. That's the genuinely, it's not like, okay, this time I can't use something that makes noise, so I better use the crossbow. No, it's literally, there's no reason. But, you know, thankfully, they're all one-shot KO. The, the... And, and it's the kind of sniper where no matter where you hit on the body, they, you know, yeah, they're taken down by. But you can't tell how much ammo you have left while you're in the first-person perspective, which is the only way to fire that, those weapons. And you don't have a lot of ammo. There's maybe a dozen shots. And it's a bar, not a counter, so I'm not 100% sure if it's a dozen or more. And the bow sounds like it fires energy, but the rifle clearly fires bullets. But anyway, yeah, you know, use your sniper weapon to shoot them. If you fire your pistol, they'll cover with the shield in time. And then they'll get too close for you to fire before you can again. But they can't do that with a long-ranged one. They, they cannot seem to block that one at all. And this is specifically for shield cars, not the, you know... Not the ones that have assault rifles. That, that's basically it. There are enemies that have shields, and we'll go in for martial arts, and and they have like it's not it's not quite a baton, but it is like something you you I don't know maybe maybe it is called a baton, but yeah you know and and there's of course a skull on on the shield and yeah really really cool stuff. But yeah, guards that use martial arts and have shields. And the shields are useful both for against your martial arts and your regular, you know, attacks. Attacks other than the, the the sniper weapons. And then there are guards that run around with assault rifles. But yeah, you know, the and it's it's not true of the earliest shield guards, but of some of the later ones it is, and that's why I'm spelling out this is what you, if you somehow are playing this game today, you know, I'm not sure anybody but me is, but if you are, that's the way to do it. You know, when you get to a part where, like, they just keep crowding you and you're like, how can I possibly, how can I even, like, this isn't, this isn't difficult, this is impossible, it'll seem impossible. And then you realize, oh, I can do this, and it's, yeah. Now... Yeah, martial arts, you basically only have three attacks, and you don't get to choose which one he'll use. Depends on which he just used, you know, how long passes between hits, how close the enemy is, and, you know, none of the martial arts attacks are that effective. It's, you know, really, I mean, they're, they're basically, if, if you're using them against AR guards, they're, they're fine, but... Whenever you're in martial arts, it's this thing, you know, the moment that it's, that you're not firing bullets, but you're fighting with martial arts, or you're fencing or something, so many games just don't know how to do that right. You know, the, and, and yeah, this is, this is the game where they just decided, well, if they have a shield, they can block your attacks with that shield. And, again, not the earliest ones, but the later ones are so quick to block that you basically can't hit them in time. And the moment that you do hit them and they just use the shield, then they lower the shield and attack you. And raise the shield and, and just keep doing that. And you're basically... Yeah, it's... It's... it's honestly, I wish that there was no martial art. Yeah, yeah, basically, I think this would be a better game 
if there were no martial arts, if every every enemy carried weapons that fire bullets and you could only take them out with your own guns that fire bullets. You know, because as it is, it's just, it's annoying whenever you're forced into it and just, again, on the earliest guards, they're not going to be quick enough to raise the shield or they're going to be a little too slow to attack you when they lower the shield. But it's not that, you know, fighting enemies in this, it's not that compelling. It can just be, it can be cool if they send a lot of enemies your way and you're just taking them out one by one. But, you know, it's it's not... It's not difficult except for when the when the shield guards are really close and at that point it's almost impossible. And really that's that's too much of this game unfortunately. The either it's really really easy or it feels impossible until you get it just right but and the since you have infinite ammo there's no stealth and every weapon has auto aim in a lot of the game you can actually run in a direction you know you're supposed to go and just fire the pistol and it, yeah in these early parts it can't cause anything bad to happen in later levels you might trigger an explosive barrel but yeah early on you know you you can with with the AR you're basically forced to stand still but the pistol, you can run in any direction and just fire it as many times as you want. I should also note, the pistol is the one that has infinite ammo. And the, you know, some of the energy weapons, but not the, the AR, not the sniper weapons. Now, yeah, and annoyingly, after the first punch you throw, which is never enough by itself, the enemy will be knocked back a few feet, but action men will stand in place doing that boxer dancing thing. In a second, uh, in a second or so, you can move again. But so can the temporarily stunned enemies. Why doesn't it just let you hit him again immediately? Heck, if you don't want the stun lock advantage, just remove the stun lock effect entirely. You know, again, like removing martial arts entirely. There'd be some people who are like, why can't? You know, why is no martial arts? Why isn't he stun locked when I hit him? But at the end of the day, it would still make the game more more fun and more smooth. And some shield guards you have to knock down more than once. And it it actually it has that cartoony thing where you knock them down and they're like little stars over their heads. It's actually, it's almost kind of weird. There are just a few places where this game is genuinely cartoony and the rest of the game is played like, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't like get super dark and it's not like really like, but it's, it's mostly realistic. You know, the, it, it doesn't, it's, it's this, you know, it's it's sci-fi kind of realistic, but realistic nonetheless. But then there are just a few things that are really cartoony. But yeah, you know, while they're you know you can't hurt them while they're recovering from being knocked down, so you're just waiting for them to get back up. And yeah, it's just it's it's kind of annoying. And it's basically it's a way to show that this enemy is a little tougher than you know otherwise. But yeah. And, you know, it can sometimes be useful to punch assault rifle guards once and then bring out the pistol and fire it while they're stun locked. You know, again, on shield guards, they'll just raise the shield in time. Now, you know, guards will automatically be targeted, providing you are pointing in their general direction and close enough to the, the right direction. And... Equipment. Now the three D map. You know, you just you press select and you get out the three D map, and I believe it pauses the game. But I actually kind of forgot to test if, like, if an enemy is nearby and you try to engage it, if he just still comes at you. I think it pauses the game. And you can, you know, you can rotate it. It's fairly useful. Your own position and areas with goals are highlighted. 
sometimes you need, say, a gas mask, and you'll have to find it before you can progress. And you get to use C4, which you manually trigger from a distance, and again, the you know, the, the control will vibrate from the explosions. And enemies and objectives are shown on the minimap, so you aren't taken by surprise. And there are mini games such as QTEs for your equipment. The electronics kit you use a lot in the game. Maybe somewhere between a dozen and two dozen. And that sounds like a lot. Usually they space it out pretty well. And basically you press the four colors in the order you're, you're told to. You know, X, O, square, and triangle. And the... You know, and, and you have to be fast enough, but not miss. And, you know, last maybe a minute or so. And basically, if you miss then for like a second or basically there's this you know I, I don't know exactly what it's supposed to be because it's not it's not quite like it'll raise the alarm if you miss you know I as, as far as I remember I, I didn't miss any times on this one it's not difficult not to miss but there's this kind of wave that'll gradually move you know it'll, it'll gradually fill the screen and then you have your own wave, which progresses slightly every time you hit the right button. But if you hit the wrong button, yours will stay stagnant for like a full second before you get another that you can press. And obviously, you know, if you don't press fast enough, their wave closes, fills the screen before yours does. And if you miss several times, also their wave will, you know, and you know it's 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 not difficult but it makes it feel like you again i'm sorry i'm for qtes in favor you know rather than just going up and pressing use when you're like hacking a thing i'm sorry it just it it should be something that you actually have to do if you just press a thing and then it activates then it should be because the thing you just pressed is literally just a switch it shouldn't be hacking or finding specific files in a thing or something. It's, I really wish that they hadn't removed that from the more recent Splinter Cell games. You know, that was something I really loved about the early Splinter Cell games. And it's so annoying because the early ones won't work. I can get the third one to work and Conviction, I've had some problems with it, like, goes super crazy, makes the computer unstable to have it installed. So, you know, I'm, I'm down to basically Chaos Theory's third one and Blacklist. And I'm never going to say anything bad about getting to play Blacklist because it's awesome. But in Blacklist, you don't get to hack. You know, Chaos Theory, there is still hacking at that point. I forget if they removed it for the for Double Agent, the fourth one. And for those who don't know, the blacklist is the sixth one, and the conviction is the fifth one. I do appreciate the the meaning of the title. You know, you you have a strong conviction. You've been convicted. You know, you're you're yeah, you're now a criminal, and yeah, just greatly appreciate that. But then you know, there's. Another QT, much, much rarer, where you have to tap X until a bar is filled, which may slowly go back down if you don't keep tapping. And, you know, if you fail one of these, you may take damage. You will have, you will have to start the whole QT over. And, yeah, I, I really like these a lot. And I do think, you know, the electronics kit, it's not overused. I do feel like some of the other things were almost used too little. But, again, at the end of the day... It probably is just to say, look, kids, you get to use this. You know, if you spend, you know, enough money, you know, nag your parents to spend enough money, then you get to have this as a toy. You know, it's it's basically that. You know, it, it very. This is a game where they very easily could have just turned every single mini game into, you know, press to activate, and then it immediately just works. 
And I really do appreciate that you actually you have all this different equipment that you have to, you know, today it would be like he has different tools on his phone or something, but back then it was like full-on equipment, you know. And let's see. Yeah, you know, you, you have an AI helping you out, which is on your wristwatch, and today it'd be an app, obviously. But yeah, like to I, I don't know why I didn't, but I didn't note these things, but you know, you have to find code keys in enemy bases in order to get into certain areas. There's one part where you have to find like um, a name tag which has like you know, which can scan and open a door. You know, you have to find specific items to you know to have computers analyze them and such to accomplish certain things. Let's see, you have the the and, and actually to save the game you have to use a tape recorder, which is wow. I'm really even in ninety nine those were a little out of date. I, I wonder how many kids pointed to that on the on the video game screen and asked their parents and their parents shook their head in disbelief. But yeah, you know, you have these things called disruptors, which you also have to use your man, you know, remote trigger to trigger. And they basically just, you know, if, if you're not trying to destroy this thing, but just disable this kind of electronic thing, you put a disruptor on it, trigger it from a distance. You know, there are, I suppose that's, more or less it and then like you know like I mentioned there's a gas mask there's one part where you have to use infrared and it kind of hurts your eyes but you don't have to spend very long in that area and there's this early on there's a metal detector which is I don't know I don't know if maybe they didn't actually mean to call it metal detector but the effect the, the what it actually does basically is it makes the screen green as if you're using, what's it called? You know, the infrared lens makes everything red, but this one makes everything green. Night vision, you know, basically. And yeah, it's like, did, did you mean night vision? It does beep like a metal detector does, but yeah. You know, and it is kind of this thing of, it's not that big of an area. I probably could have found these without the metal detector, but whatever. You know, whereas the, the infrared area, you do kind of have to use the, the infrared in order to see enough to get by. And it is annoying that sometimes you have to scroll through all, all the way through your equipment for almost all non-standard equipment, well, equipment, so very frequently, there's like 10, yeah, I counted, there's 10 items that you have to scroll through to get to the very top one, and the top one is often the one you need to use, and that's the thing that you've picked up in the level, you know, that's the code key or the, the name tag and such. Now, KO not kill. Despite you firing live rounds, including from an assault rifle, supposedly you never kill anyone. And and again, you're also you're destroying enemy cars, you know. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I guess it ha maybe every single enemy car has that thing that you see in Speed Race or the movie, you know, the the Wachowski movie, where you see a car. Be destroyed and right before you know I, I think it does blow up but right before it does the the driver is like spat out and he's like in this like kind of protective is it like a bubble or is it maybe like there's a parachute I, I don't remember exactly but yeah and yeah I guess that's the idea although you never do see and that's also you don't there's no blood enemy you know there, there's no blood, there are no dead bodies. Enemies immediately fade out of existence, you know, so the kids don't see a dead body. And you do destroy robots, but the only thing that you kill are these dangerous mutant plants. And it's made very clear that these, 
yeah, these are dangerous. You do need to, you know, to kill them. And that's also that's, you know, the the PG thirteen. That's the the way they get around that kind of thing. You know, there's also there are also mutant animals in Radon Island X. So yeah. And if you run out of health, you are captured, not killed. And there's actually there's a cutscene of you being taken to a cell, and then you have 30 seconds to press X to continue. And if you do click, you'll see a short cutscene of you escaping the cell. And if you don't press anything, you just go back to the main menu. And you know it. Yeah, I'll get into how it saves, so it's not a huge issue, but. You know, and and if you don't want to watch very much of the cutscene, the moment that it starts to show the cutscene, just tap X like two or three times, and immediately you'll be, you know, it'll be loading the the area you're in, and you'll be playing on. So, and if you can damage something by shooting it, you're meant to be able to. You can't accidentally break something you shouldn't, and. Any NPC you meet is an enemy. There's no such thing as like shooting someone and then finding, oh, no, you weren't supposed to, you know. And there's literally a cutscene of Action Man making sure to rescue a boss he defeated, thus knocked out, as the place explodes around them. You really have to admire the idealism on display there. That's, yeah, no, no matter what, no one, you know no one is going to die here. I don't care how evil you are, I don't care that the place is exploding around, it's just, yeah. Weapons. Now, let's see. Overall, there is a pretty good amount of weapons a number of them are limited to boss fights and such, and really too many of them are just an energy rifle firing at different intensities and such, you know. And yeah, for the for the different ones, like it's it's a real versatile thing this energy rifle because it over the course of the boss fights, especially there are a lot of different ways this thing can fire, but. You know, it's not, and and at the end of the day, you know, when you're just using, and that's maybe also why they didn't bother to give you that many different ones. There's not that much variety to the gunfighting. You know, regard like I said, there's if you meet an enemy that has a weapon, he has an AR, plain and simple. And regardless of what and what weapon you use against the enemies, it won't take that many shots to take them out. And you know, it's it's not like you know, if if you're playing, you know, I guess off the top of Doom, you know, it makes a huge difference whether you're firing like the the shotgun or like that that I, I don't remember what it's called, but that energy rifle, you know, that fires like these blue energy shots, you know. Yeah, obviously there's a it's it's yeah, it makes a difference. In this, if you use the energy weapon instead of one that fires bullets, it's not really going to make a difference. And I'm almost 100% certain that the energy weapon doesn't make a difference against a shield. They, the shield can block anything you you fire at it. So, again, you know that that would actually that would have made a lot of sense, especially considering that some of the time the energy rifle does need to charge up before it can fire so that would mean you have to make put some distance between you and as he's running at you you charge up the rifle and you fire just before he punches you you know that would yeah and there's this thing called the sonic rifle this thing is there to sell toys because it's basically useless you know it stuns enemies but since they're so easy to take out it's not very useful it would be if there were like really tough enemies and it would buy you time to attack again if this thing was would would fire through the shield actually i guess i never tested it against the shield but i'm almost certain nothing goes through the shield and sniper type weapons can zoom and like i already mentioned they're used entirely in first person perspective 
you can shoot all enemies without getting hit yourself. You're warned with a red arrow if an enemy is aiming at you from off screen, a red laser sight aimed at you if on screen. And you know, if you do get hit enough times, you do have to start the segment over. But yeah, these are a lot of fun. You don't move, other, you, you're only directing around the rifle, and you're doing this with the arrow keys, you know. But yeah, pure rail shooter segments, and you know, every enemy you shoot will just like briefly peer out from behind a crate, out of a window, and such. And if you don't hit them before they're done peering, during which they can shoot you, either they'll shoot you or they won't, but they definitely will stop peering out for at least a little bit. So, you know, no, none of the enemies are just constantly waiting for you to attack them. And, you know, some enemies will run past you at a distance. You don't have to aim very carefully through it. There's a short cooldown each time you shoot, but you have infinite ammo in these parts. You know, the only place in the game where using that gun will have infinite ammo. And, yeah, you know, if you just wing a guy as he's running past you, no, it's still going to take him out immediately. And... You know, in in the game, ammo isn't hard to come by if you do want to use the non-pistol weapons a lot. And typically, the the game will spawn ammo on enemies you take out. Not necessarily every single one of them, but it's fairly, you know, it's 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 very generous in in that regard. Sometimes when you start to use the AR, it'll reload first, and it'll take maybe one or two seconds from you pressing the trigger to you firing the first shot. That's poor design, and this is, again, this is especially bad when you're against shield enemies, and you're trying, you know, even if you, because they'll close that distance, and you might not get to fire it at all. And I, I don't know why they didn't just make it that when you fire for a few seconds, then you have to reload before you can put the gun away, instead of it being before you start firing. Yeah, I, it, you know, it's not very intuitive for you to have to fire the gun before you're looking to fire it for, for the reload. Now, AI slash enemies. Now, you fight robots, both humanoid and giant insectoid, you know, wasp, flying scorpion, bee, and, and mutant plants, and the 16-page, yes, it looks bigger, but it's in several languages, manual says insects, but they're all robotic, it's not like you fight giant bugs, that's crazy, that's in Raid on Island X. You like evil robots? Of course you like evil robots. Everybody likes evil robots. Guess what? You're in a third-person perspective game, Lil. You will fight robots. At least one of them in boss form, and at least one of them the size of a human being, or even bigger. In the vehicle levels, vehicles fighting, it fitting that type of area. So, you know, ground, air, and on and under water. And there is no level that doesn't have at least some really cool, memorable enemy you know, designs. Again, not in guard form, not in human guard form, although their their clothing and, like, armor it can be kind of cool, but, yeah, the there's always some, yeah. And there are these cameras with spotlights, and, you know, it's, this is, I wish more games with where you had to dodge kind of, I guess, yeah, to be fair, this is slight, this, this is a stealth element, I missed that in what I previously said, but, yeah, you know, you can always tell what the camera is looking at, I really, more games should have this, and, yes, I realize that a lot of real-life cameras don't tell people what they're pointing at, because, you know, it would make it easier for people to avoid the camera. But this, you know, these are video games, you know. They, they, I've never played a video game that didn't have something that real life very much doesn't to help you play the game at least a little easier. Never. And I've played hundreds 
of games. You know, I started at age seven. I've played some real minimalist games. I've never played a game that didn't have something that really tells you, okay, now you're making progress, or this thing, you know, or now you're specifically not, this is not where you're supposed to go, that kind of thing. But yeah, you know, they legitimately have spotlights. If you stay out of the spotlight, the camera will not see you. And, you know, sometimes they'll attract enemies. A lot of them are outfitted with, like, it sounds like an AR, so that's what I'm going to say. And, yeah, that's that's cool. You know, you, you get into, it, it might do both. It might attract them. Those do have, like, alarm sounds. And, yeah, it'll shoot at you as long as you're inside. And the, the spotlight will be able to move a little further than it did before it noticed, before it detected you. Not not like forever, it won't be able to follow you forever, but although there are some parts where it's close, almost every section of that area you can be in the spotlight. But yeah, it it is a really cool way to, and, and really that's you know, every video game camera that notices the player, once it's noticed you, it can see at least a little further than you know, before it was just okay, within this as, as long as the camera, you know, pans like this, most people will be spotted through it, but, yeah. And cameras don't detect stuff that happens to enemies, so if you're attacking an enemy who's in view of the camera, it's not going to respond to that at all. And, yeah, you know, though, though the guards don't have different weapons, one level to the next, except the vehicle ones, they do all, both level, both level types included, look different by at least some, and, you know, this includes one or two lieutenants, perhaps even Dr. X himself, that you run into more than once. Really, you could show someone who played this game and paid close attention to this, a screenshot from any level in this, and they would be able to tell you, you know, which level it's from, how far into the game that is, since also, they get cooler each time, making it further rewarding to make progress. And yeah, I'm I'm gonna talk some more about. It. I think that might be in the thoughts section, but a little about enemy, you know, look, enemy appearance. I know it makes it easier. Maybe it was necessary, but one robot type you specifically have to get. Not that it's difficult, but the game does make it a point to. A handgun with armor piercing rounds. It looks and otherwise acts just like your regular one. But then your AR is also useful against them. In that case, why not just say that you need armor piercing ammo, not a new gun? And then it could be that the AR ammo you pick up from then on is now armor piercing instead of this oddity. It's really. Yeah. But I do appreciate. I tested every single weapon on them. If you don't use a weapon that fires bullets on these robots, it simply will not, not damage them. I really appreciate that. That's, you know, so you, yeah, you do specifically have to use that. That, that really underlines these things have armor. You know, there is, you, you cannot just, and, and it also, it, it further, you know, the armor piercing pistol, you just pick it up. You you find it. It's as easy to find as any item in this. You pick it up right before you need it, basically. And, yeah. And explosions are really cool. And they'll go through crates and such, so don't think you can just hide behind one. It's so satisfying to shoot a robot and see it explode. Actually, that's not entirely true. What makes it satisfying is when you, with your bare hands, beat the thing to the point where it explodes, leaving you moments to leap away so you aren't within the blast radius. A little more satisfying. No, you can't do that every single time, but that makes the times you can even more fun. You know, the... the yeah, I'm, I'm not sure there are many types of robots where you can do that, and certainly some of them you very much cannot, but yeah. And some areas enemies will keep spawning in front of and behind you and since they're easy to fight it's not a problem and also haven't seen them even once actually attack you when you're doing QTEs or otherwise prevent it from fighting back and let's 
see. Yeah, and there are explosive barrels that you can shoot for immediate explosion. Or there were just proximity mines that you can just barely ex escape the explosion of. And they can work as dominoes for each other. And auto aim sometimes targets them as well. Tar targets them well. And they look like they contain toxic waste, but the explosion doesn't show, doesn't look like they actually did. It doesn't like spread gas or something. And there are these auto Gatling gun emplacements. Someone making this game loved Gatling guns. They're everywhere on both your vehicles and some of the enemies in, you know, regular levels, just, yeah, in, in third person segment levels. Fire barely hurts you. And there are robot Rottweiler guard dogs. And yes, some of them can be beaten into exploding. I would love to tell you that you get to fight a robot shark, but it's only in a cutscene. It's still pretty cool. And guards respawn if you spend a while in one area. And sometimes that just, you know, that is going to happen no matter how fast you go through the area. An enemy who, who spots you will have, like, you know, red, like, I guess, you know, yeah, not, they're not quite like exclamation points, but they're, you know, the, it's, yeah, it's like in a comic book when, when a character is excited, you know, think, think spider sense. And if he can't find you after spotting you, it'll be question marks above his head. And... This can actually happen if you're in a cutscene and he's just facing the other way because he can't move during a cutscene, so he can't turn to find you. So if he was facing away when the cutscene started, he'll just be looking like not that far away from you, and he'll be like, "Where'd he go? What happened?" And it's just, it's it's pretty hilarious. And boss battles. Now, you'll have access to your equipment in the third-person segment levels, except in the boss segments, where you'll only have the specific gun, always one, needed to defeat the boss. Actually, I suppose there's... Well, let's, I mean, maybe there's at least one time where it's more than one gun. I feel like it would have been cool if the game asked you what you think you need to defeat the boss, once it's given you the short briefing on it, it is always this so, has this self-rotating image of the boss, so you can really get every last detail. And then if you get it right, that could you know earn you a few of the collectible power points or something. Among other bosses, you fight a powered exoskeleton. Yes, they they put a lot of thought into what would seem really cool. And again, maybe maybe. It's possible that basically all of them were just toys and or they appeared in the cartoon. All I'm saying is someone sat down and thought, what is awesome? In, in the 90s, you know, today we have different standards, but, you know, what is awesome today in the 90s? And just, okay, let's give, you know, let's put that on screen and in toy form. Now, the, the third-person segment boss battles are very straightforward, typical first-person shooter boss battles. Frequently, you're running around dodging the enemy fire until they become vulnerable for a short period of time. Then you have to stand in place, usually hold down fire while the weapon charges, slowly fires the like. And you do need to know how to dodge, but it's easy to do once you understand how. And there are actually a few fights that aren't, you know, yeah, I should briefly add, and then, you know, once you fire on them for a while, then they're going to be vulnerable, and you usually have to run up close to them and do something, such as plant, you know, excuse me, I forget if it's, I think it's disruptors, not C4, because it's probably too armored for C4, which is another reason why, you know, disruptors instead of C4. That's another thing, you know, sometimes you can blow up a part of a computer and it's still gonna run. I forget what the movie is called, but it has a female lead, and it's 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 a diehard clone, and I wanna say the bad guy is played by that stand-up comedian. 
the, the one who plays two roles in One Night at McCool's. I want to say that's the one, or, or maybe it's the one where there's there's also a Die Hard clone where no, I think yeah, I'm thinking of the Jean Claude Van Damme one, the Sudden Death, which is of course indeed set at you know this this what's it called ice ice ice, ice hockey, you know, and yeah, that's the one where it's Powers Booth, but anyway, yeah, and you know it's this woman this really badass woman as the the action hero lead and there's this part where she's you know she's caught this hacker who was helping you know who's one of the bad guys and you know yeah basically you know he's he's doing hacking stuff and she wants to stop it and what she does is shoot out the monitor and like when you know I watched that with a friend and we were like that's not going to stop the thing. You know, it, it maybe looks kind of cool on screen, but if you don't take out the computer itself, it's going to keep going. The only thing you do by shooting out the monitor is that he can't see what it's doing. If it was running its own thing, and I think it was in the movie, in the, in the scene, it would just keep going. You know, you have to shoot the computer itself, and it's just, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, you know, you yeah, you have to move close to the, the, the boss and do a thing to it while it's vulnerable for that. And then, you know, you do that thing, and then it recharges most of its health bar, but a little less because you do you did some damage on it. And then you again dodge for a while, shoot at it, and yeah. Now but but yeah, a few interesting fights such as a mech. Yes, that you can't fight directly with your weapons, so you're you you can't completely stop it with your own weapons, at least. And you know, I'm not I'm not going to say here what you're supposed to do, but the game does always tell you what to do with these bosses. And again, you cannot turn these hints off, though you can skip the description if you don't want any kind of hint there. But yeah, and there's. There's more than one boss in every third-person section level, and let's see. And during the boss fights, the camera isn't too bad. It'll stand completely still if the area isn't very large. If it is large, it will stand at a distance from the boss, who's in the middle of the arena, and with very little. Yeah, the, the boss will typically be in... Actually, scratch that, but he... What I mean to say is the, the boss is not going to hug, like, the outer wall of the area very frequently, and he will typically get fairly close to the middle for letting, making it easier for you to attack him. And he'll attack with ranged attacks, that, you know, yeah, ranged attacks rather than walking up to you, although some will try to walk up to you. And as you move around the boss, you know, or to the sides in order to dodge that attacks, the camera will, you know, follow the boss more or less. And if you have to move close to the boss during the parts of the fight, the camera will move closer to the boss as you do, again, making it more, yeah. Vehicles. It was completely random that I review this so close to Just Cause 3, which also lets you use vehicles on the ground, in the air, and on water. And in fact, that game has DLC specifically set for those three. Yeah. And basically, the in the vehicle levels, you move around a fixed area, battling enemies, collecting stuff, and then facing off against the boss enemy. And yeah, the the one really bad thing about it, I, I forget if I put it in the notes, but others have pointed out it's basically you know the old Grand Theft Auto. It's it's pre Grand Theft Auto three Grand Theft Auto. You know, top down with the vehicle, and you're moving around. You know, and sometimes it'll be the city and 
yeah, you know, the, the difference is you cannot hurt other cars, and I'll, I'll get into that, but yeah, one, one thing that's really bad about the vehicle levels is the U-turn system, which will turn you 180 degrees if you're moving in the opposite direction of your objective, and the problem is this system cannot tell if you're going in the right direction navigation-wise, only direction-wise, meaning that it won't care if there's a big hole between you and your objective that you're trying to circle around, and yes, this does happen. It'll just turn around regardless, and, you know, I, I thought maybe you could back up. I've, I've, tried, I've tried that before this playthrough. I just forgot that it didn't work, but, you know, it's, it's a pretty obvious thing to try. Okay, so you're not going to let me drive in this direction. Maybe I can back up in this direction. No, it's just if you're if you're facing in the right direction, what it U turns you to, and you're using the the back, you, you can back up in general. It'll you know to, to try to get stuff the, the game U turns you away from, it'll show the U turn icon without U turning you since you're already facing the right direction, and just stop your movement dead. And sometimes it actually gets it backwards and U turns you into the direction that you were, yeah, it, yeah, it'll, it'll U-turn you so that you're driving away from the objective instead of towards it, yeah, and it also may make you turn the moment after the enemy made a turn before you had a chance to make the turn, and might get you turned too many degrees, and you may be trying to go around a building that you could you know, if, if you're flying, you're trying to go around a building instead of going over it, because again, going over it, that's the direct that's that's the direct direction to go, but it's gonna take longer because you Yeah, I'll I'll get more into why a little later, but basically yeah, instead it's just gonna U turn you and it's not gonna let you keep collecting power points once you've reached the goal, even though there are more you know, it tells you to go back to base and abandon them and won't let you go back out. Pro tip, get power points while you're chasing enemies in the first part of a vehicular level. It's a lot harder to do later on. And, yeah, it really... I uh, Again, the U-turn system should not have been put in the game because the game is not that difficult. You have a mini-map. You're told what to do. You know, I don't think... Let's say a seven-year-old. This is the first game he ever plays. He's still basically going to be able to do it because there aren't that many, like, timed objectives. You know, so, yeah, it's it's not... And, yeah, you there's no way to turn off the U-turn system. And it prevents you from picking up some power points in certain parts of missions with no warning, it's not going to tell you if you keep going in this direction. Like, you know, it's not when when you're playing. I don't know if that's if the pitch there's high enough for you to hear it, but that is indeed laundry. It's, yeah, the the if if you're you know if if you're playing. It's a new machine. I don't know if it's gonna keep beeping until I turn it off. I'll I'll wait a little. I I hope this isn't like absolutely horrible to hear on the camera. I don't know if it's picking up at all. But the the okay. I'm getting the distinct sense that it's going to keep. Let me just go turn it off. go. The, right, the U-turn, basically, you know, the, the game does want you to pick up all the power points, so at least once you've gotten, you know, partway through one of the vehicle levels, why doesn't it just say, you know, this, the, the, you know, if, 
yeah, just just have like a, a screen saying you you have so and so many PowerPoints remaining in the level. Would you like to pick them up or something? Or like after you've defeated the boss, let the player move around. You know, that's that's where it's very un GTA. GTA, you can move around a lot. You know, between missions and such. But yeah. Now. And as someone else notes, the camera follows from a bird's eye view without losing the action or swooping about nauseatingly. And... Yeah, you can't bash into civilian cars or cause wanton destruction. You can smash boxes and collect PowerPoints. And yeah, as I haven't said that either, but yeah, in the shape of the Action Man logo. And let's see. And and yeah, I mentioned earlier in third person segment levels, you never encounter NPCs that aren't enemies. In some of the vehicle levels you do, because you know, some of them you're in the city, and yeah, and, and that also, I, again, the very start of the game, you're in the city, you have a fast car, they're driving around stealing, you know, like, if you, if you, if, if, if you translated that into, like, real life, like, if, you know, a kid is just playing, you know, it's, it's his spare time, and suddenly, like, he gets, like, a call on his cell phone and is told there's a badass car parked in your garage with weapons. Someone is stealing in town. Go stop them. Yeah, he's going to get his seven-year-old ass in the car seat, figure out some way how to drive, and, you know, yeah, he's going to go... And then when the game tells you, okay, now you're in third person, saying, you know, the, the, yeah, the first base you have to investigate is actually this desert base, and you've got these, like, rocks, and you've just landed from this, you know, skydiving thing. You know, at this point, it's a lot less relatable. You know, it's, it's, you're, you're deeper in. And, you know, the game could have started like that, but it doesn't. It doesn't go full immersion. the The first level. I mean, really, the only thing about that first level that's really like out there is that the enemy cars are firing this kind of toxic stuff, and that. And again, that your car has these guns, whilst it looks like a regular car. That's that's it. Other than that, it's your in a car in a city and there are bad guys doing bad things and yeah the, there's a minimap with your position your base and current enemies highlighted and the remaining amount of enemies is listed in the upper right corner and sometimes it's not enemies but powerpoints you have to get and yeah and and again the the segments where you have to collect PowerPoints, you would think, it, the, you don't have to collect all PowerPoints, you have to collect a chunk of them, a few dozen of them. If you, if you collect them before you get to that segment of the level where you have to collect them, then it's just going to skip. It's not going to, like, gonna, well, you, you have to collect them, but you already collected them, it does not compute. No, it's just going to skip to the last part, or, the, yeah, the next, the next part again. No, it was the last part. And the, the, you know, but if you don't collect the PowerPoints before then, then it will tell you you have to collect this and this many PowerPoints. And it'll actually, the, the arrow will go to what it, uh, what it reads as the closest one to get to. But it doesn't actually necessarily mean, you know, there might be one really close to you. Maybe it's hidden in a crate. And you're like trying to destroy that crate, but nope, the U-turn just won't let you. And just yeah, I 
am realizing this video is taking a while. I'm on page 10 out of 16 pages of notes, and that's before the level notes. So, like with Just Cause 3, I'm going to try to talk faster. But yeah, basically, you, you know, once you've collected the power points it wants you to collect, it's not going to then tell you you could go ahead and collect the rest of them. Nope, it's going to tell you, return to base. That's it. You're not going to get to collect the last of them, which is, again, why I tell you to do it before you're told to do it. Because once it tells you to do it, it's not going to let you collect the rest of them once you've collected the ones that it specifically tells you to. Now, the level will send you all over the map, sometimes right from one end or corner to another, destroying enemies, you know, catching, yeah. And some of the enemies are fast, like really fast. And you'll need the smaller of your available cars to collect certain power points. And really, you might as well switch to that one immediately. It, basically, the, the thing about it is, it doesn't have as good weapons as the bigger one. But, yeah, I, I do feel like they it wouldn't suck if the game just told you, you have to choose which of these, because... If you don't read the manual, it's not going to tell you immediately that you can switch to another vehicle. It might only tell you when you're trying to collect power points. And sometimes you cannot collect all the power points if you're using the bigger of your vehicles. You have to use the smaller one for at least some of them. And the... Let's see... And, yeah, basically it will always... There, there will, in a view level, there will always be an arrow pointing to your next objective, whether it's an enemy you have to destroy, capture, whether it's a power point you're collecting, you know, regardless, it will always point to it, and, yeah, it, you, you don't spend very long trying to figure out how to get to a place or where an enemy is or something like that, not in a vehicle level. And, and really, the, the third-person perspective levels, it's not difficult to find your way either. Now, all vehicles have infinite ammo. Some weapons automatically seek to targets, at least when you're aiming more or less at the enemies. And basically, you always have, you have one or more on any of your vehicles. Machine guns, missiles, fireballs, you know. I don't think there's a single vehicle that doesn't have at least one machine gun of yours on it. And, yeah. Now, vehicle handling is slightly awkward and slow to respond, and the... A lot of the enemy vehicles bear the logo of the person they're working for directly or through a lieutenant or the lieutenant's logo. Every enemy in the aerial level is purple in at least some of the vehicle where the the ground level it's this acidy green that fits the acidy green acid attacks of acid. And in the water-based level, every vehicle is an enemy. It's you know, you're in an area that only has enemies, so there's, yeah, you can't mistake a vehicle for an enemy that isn't an enemy. To hurt enemies in vehicle levels, you have to get close to the enemy and have to keep them in front of you so you are fairly dependable. Auto aim focuses on them. If they keep moving, you have to match their speed in turns. It's annoying when they or you are faster than the other, and it's really bad if you are, and or they have slippery control since it has you sliding away from that sweet spot. It's also bad if there are several enemies in one area, then they all fire on you until you you know, until you one by one take them out, and you have to keep the auto aim on the one you're attacking or it won't hurt them. There's almost no such thing as area of effect attacks in your arsenal on the vehicle levels, which really there easily could be. It, I, I don't see why they couldn't have, like, when several enemies are attacking you all at once, you know, on some of the, on some of your vehicles, you're firing, like, missiles, and you can fire, like, fairly fast. I don't see why it couldn't have you like hold down another button and every you know every other missile will hit the next enemy over and maybe some of the enemies would try to run some some of the enemies do actually try to outrun you if you're doing a lot of damage to them. Is it challenging? Now, there are three difficulty settings, and you will get at least some challenge, even on the easiest. And on the higher ones, you quickly become frustrated and as you find yourself really fighting the controls camera, etc. I go with easy, especially the first time you play. You do have infinite retries, and there's no fall damage as long as you land on a surface that doesn't hurt you to touch, or in water or such. But you can save outside of levels in the menu. This is the only way the game will keep the power points you gained in the level. It might also be how 
it keeps the progress you made that meant you get to start playing from the most recent release level. It might also auto save on completion of a level. I haven't erased my progress in ages, so I don't know for sure. And if you did have a save game inside a level and you save in the menu, it will overwrite that save. But you can start a vehicle level without it overriding your progress in non-vehicle level. And basically the 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 areas tend not to be very big and it will you know the overall bases are pretty big but you have to go through a ton of doors to move between these fairly small areas and every single area will auto save and you can also manually save but i'm almost certain that no matter how no matter when you save the save is at the start of that segment no further and it's also very easy to find items since you can't walk back and forth between many areas there's this one bit, just remember to look in f both in front of and behind creates the block your view if you're having trouble finding an item early on. Each small area you are told how many power points in that area total and how many, if any, you've gotten and or are missing. You know, and you won't be able to go everywhere right away making item finding even easier, especially early on. Items are found when it, where it makes sense for game progression, but not where it would make sense in a real world logical way. And yeah, if if you you know if you get captured, you won't have to do very many things again, and that's something I really appreciate. the The checkpoint checkpoint saving is really one of the the best ways to do. Like you know, you you should never have to redo that much of a game if you fail at some point. You know, and I, I realize that some older games, you know. They couldn't have, for example, couldn't have checkpoint saving. Keep in mind, a lot of them could still have password systems. You know, so again, if you you don't have to get through the entire thing in a single sitting. Now the yeah the the you know if you if you get close to being captured, if you lose a lot of health, the game will usually spawn health power up. Some of them like healing you almost completely some of them don't heal you that much but some of them heal you almost completely just picking that one up and yeah it'll spawn those even in boss battles and you know vehicle third person segment levels both and I may already mention but the same is true of ammo once you start using it spawns from downed enemies and basically if you do run out of health in a vehicle level you do have to start it all over unless you reach the boss in which case you'll start from where you fight the boss and I have played this game with particularly stupid children and not one of them managed to fail a vehicle level especially not before reaching the boss you know if you're at least seven years old yeah you know yeah, don't don't make this the very first video game that you ever play because there are definitely there are more there, there are ones that don't that that have better design that that get you a better feel. If if the if the first time you reach a specific design decision is a bad as bad design decision, you're just not going to get a feel for how it should properly work. Now, the the power points. I'm not sure there's any bonus to getting all of them, other than you know bragging rights. Personally, I've collected all of them more than once, and there are a few that it just refuses to give credit for me getting, and that's really annoying. But the, yeah, between missions, you can see the skins of various enemies, vehicles, you can get some information about the weapons, so it's not especially useful. You can test the sound, and there's this you know, fake DOS prompt thing where you can play Pong or Frogger and there's also this thing called Mega Demo which is essentially a light show and you know, if you know what the PSX can and cannot do you know that that light show is not going to be like spectacular and let's see Graphics and sound. Now the the voice acting, the the you know you might the 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 various lieutenants really ham it up. 
I'd say it worked quite well. And then there's that annoying thing where, like, a number of the lines, the actor didn't understand the meaning of what they were performing. You know, in in the first level, the, the villain lieutenant will say, ha ha, action man, instead of ha ha, action man, you know, and that's also, that's the way it's written. You know, in level two, the, the AI on my wristwatch said code key pieces instead of code key pieces, which makes sense and is, again, the, the thing that it's talking about. Those were the examples that I noted. I'm, I, I'm not sure there are any other, or at least not many other. Now, my version comes with the following language. English, French, German, Spanish, Italian, Dutch, Swedish, Finnish, Norwegian, and Danish. And yes, all of those are spoken as well as written. That's really cool. You know, I literally, you know, if I expected them to have a PSX, I could travel Europe and many places with with the, a copy of the game, and they would be able to hear it in their native tongue. You know, in a lot of things like this, it's only the written. Now, let's see. There's not a lot of graphic glitches. There's not a ton of different sound effects. But, but yeah, basically, the, the stuff you can look up, you can look through your bookcase, which is actually your weapons cabinet. It turns very James Bond, like your wardrobe, which is your own outfits, storage chest, which is you and enemy vehicles, though not any, not any vehicle that... Though not, not any... I don't understand what I wrote there, but anyway, your enemies, including boss enemies, lieutenants that you don't directly fight and such, and all of these have all the ones from the game. You can also rewatch any video you've unlocked by reaching that part of the game, which is again, you know, that's that's a thing that the the PSX could do. It could play back video, you know, and you know, in the in the case of like the the Disney action games, it was you know DVD video DVD quality, but in this it is just these in-engine videos, but I mean there's not every single video has something cool, but a lot of them do, and again, I mean these are things they 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 could easily have just phoned it in and they didn't. That I've, I've played so many children's games where they just, they were like, it's for kids, why bother, you know, they're, they're not gonna, you know, yeah, and in this, they really, they put in effort. They clearly meant for, it's just some of the times they made the wrong decision. But I don't really feel like there's anything in the game where they were just like, eh, who cares? They they legitimately, they had a list of items and vehicles and enemy appearances and like all this kind of stuff that, yeah. And music is exciting when it means to be, atmospheric when it needs to be. And briefly, critic pros. Not a single of the reviews were actually still up, so I can only quote you the the ratings that they gave for the ones that showed ratings. Absolute PlayStation gave it 68 out of 100. Hot Games gave it 0.05 out of 5. Official PlayStation Magazine gave it 3 out of 5, and PSX Nation gave it 78 out of 100. And I'd say, yeah, somewhere around 70. I mean, personal enjoyment, it's 90 out of 100, but overall, somewhere 60, 70, something like that. You know, there's just, there are a number of design decisions that just, yeah. And I suppose... This is, I should maybe, there are a number of reviews, but at the end of the day, I mean, they're online. And this review is getting long. So I'm going to go ahead and skip to level design. Now, there is a pretty good variety to game levels. 
and each level is in a slightly different location although I believe you know you're in the city in two of the vehicle levels and I mean I didn't look close enough. It, it the, the levels move fast so I didn't like sit down try to notice are these the same buildings and so I think it might be a different excuse me a different section of the same city maybe but then your base looks I don't know I'm, I, I couldn't say but other than that you know every single level is at least slightly different so you know the let's see and and in to to add variety other than the fact that you can go places and take routes that you before you couldn't since now you're flying rather than driving the air one is set at night the land one during the day every level you've completed can be replayed from the menu anytime you want just note that if you do when you save if you got new powerpoints and you save it will override any save you made inside a third person perspective level which I think I already said but anyway I love that all the levels are so fun and so short you can go back and replay for fun for powerpoints for any reason at all really there again that is a thing where there are some games where sure you can replay that level but man it's it's kinda long and there's that part that's really annoying so I guess I wouldn't you know yeah, I, when I replay this game, I tend to replay the whole thing, and there are a lot of games where I where I'm like, I don't want to replay. It. I've replayed, you know, Crash Bandicoot Warped. I've replayed a ton of levels from that. There are definitely a few levels. Where I'm like, okay, not many. There there are a lot of really good levels in that. It's it's on the schedule, but yeah, there there are definitely some games where. Let's see. Where the the yeah some some of the levels you don't necessarily feel like replaying and you know I say Nocturne is one where some of the some of them are very uneven where like I mean I'm I'm a lot more likely to replay some of the others than like the third one where you're, you know the the whole Chicago you know mobster thing but to be fair that's also fairly that's a pretty good amount of variety. I'm I'm having trouble right now thinking of good examples for for games that like maybe Hercules. There are some levels in in the Hercules game where no, you know what? I yeah, I plain cannot think of any right now that I'm like, okay, that's a game that for sure wouldn't. And we've reached the thoughts segment, so. Excuse me. Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. level notes and I decided that this was where I was gonna get into most of the specifics because I really don't want to give too much of this really cool stuff away from the levels and I'm gonna try to not again the videos getting long so I'm gonna try to just get like highlights and such now in in the in level one you know the I guess yeah just briefly for anyone the the for anyone who doesn't know, I should, I should maybe say, if you didn't play the game, you know, this, I hope this section is still going to be interesting to you. But, yeah, you know, level one, city streets, I want to say it's called, you know, you're driving around the city. You know, there are a lot of NPC cars, including cops, who are, of course, not armed enough to stop these enemies. You know, they have these... Yeah, you know, but but they've got like the the sirens going and such. You know, there there are not that many NPCs in any one place, and they drive fast, but they you know they can't hurt me, I can't hurt them, and it's this is a you know in Grand Theft Auto, the, there are a lot more cars, and yeah, but that's not the idea here. And I drive this very Bond-like sports car. It looks a lot like the one used in the Dark Knight. 
and I also have this fast motorcycle and do, that can do stunt jumps for power points. And you know that is the vehicle in this level that can reach all the different power points, the, the jumps, the narrow areas. And for the last part, I you know once I unlock it with power points, and once I start going after Toxic, I use the the four by four. And you know I'm finding several different kinds of cars, and you know they they leave like a trail of goo or acid, and some some of them are fire it at me and. The, you know that's basically it for the the guns of their vehicles, and you know that that does kind of fit with this whole sciency kind of you know la later enemies have fire fire bullets, but in this one you know they're stealing laboratory equipment, so they're yeah. And let's see, excuse me, and yeah, when I reach Toxica, I have to chase her around the city, which is annoying. You know, I I talked about the before where, you know. You have to get close enough to an enemy, you have to get into the sweet spot, and yeah. And once our health is lowered by about a third, she drives to this small square area where we are then trapped by cars on her side, which is strange because just a few minutes ago I could fight those very easily. The blockade should probably have been something else. You know, there are other things that block your path that, like, you know, there's this construction yard where, you know, you've got, like, construction yard machinery, you know, blocking your path it would have made a lot of sense for you know may maybe they should have like leveled a building and like action man says it's a good thing there are no people inside that building or something but yeah and you know got the huge puddle of goo in the middle regenerates her health but drains mine and she's shooting goo at me you know i i didn't have a lot of trouble d defeating her but the you know, and I actually did get captured once early on the level, but I didn't have to collect the power points that I already had, and I didn't have to defeat every enemy that I had either. And you know, I know, I know, I I didn't really count, but there's maybe half a dozen or a dozen enemies to fight before Toxica, and you know, I defeat her, but she says they already had enough scientists and equipment, and that's you know the the. And that's one of the, those things where, again, I, I really appreciate you, you did make progress because if you didn't stop Toxica, you know, even though they already had enough equipment, if they get away with enough of it, they could set up a second base and you'd have to, there would be another base you'd have to, you know, go and take out. And instead, you limited, you know, they're not getting any additional laboratory equipment. So, once I shut down the, the, you know, the base with the laboratory equipment, which is of course the next one, they can't keep doing, and and that's also you know once you shut down the the desert base, they don't, you know, there there are no new, you know, mutant plants. There's no any any toxin that you you see is stuff that they already had. So, and yeah, the the second level, you know, I track gangrene to the the desert area, the cliffs and such, and that's the that's the part where I have to use the night vision filter, which is annoying. And then you know you have the the sniper area, and yeah, I, I really appreciate that in the three levels, the, the the three third person segment levels, you actually do get to, you know, you. You have to set. You have to collect at least one code key each time. You have at least you have one sniper area each time, and I feel like there was one more thing, but I can't completely remember. But but yeah, certainly those they have at different points in the level. You know, here you immediately find a code key, and then you start using sniper. You then you find the snipers in one of the others. It snipers immediately. The code key a level later. And let's see. Yeah, and you now we reach Professor Gangreen's lab and find working on mutant plants. And you know, I, I fight the gardener robots, the, you know, like basically human-sized driving Terminator One Hunter killers. And you know, they have the the toxic spray, and I punch at least one of them to the point where it explodes. That's yeah, a lot of fun. And I, you know. I, I let in light over the plants, and I'm, I said stuff thing. Why did they have the canopy? You know, sure the bathrooms down the halls. Please don't interrupt me while I'm speaking. I'm, I'm sorry. You know, why did they have that roof over the the plants that can't handle 
to have any sunlight. That really makes no sense. And, you know, I reached the, the first boss, the, the Queen Plant, which is just by itself an awesome name. And it's alive. It's alive. And, you know, has half a dozen heads, no, which I have to fight at the same time. You know, it fires two kinds of toxic spores, one that has to hit but can knock me down, one that has an area of effect that can also knock me down. You know, I fight it by shining a really bright light on this light-sensitive plant. That's just, that's so awesome. That's such, just, again, they, they sat down and were like, what would be a really cool thing to fight and a cool way to fight it, you know, and it's just, yeah. And this is, of course, you know, so many other games, it would be a flamethrower you'd be using, you know, but it's for the kids, so, yeah. And, you know, the, and, and the last head, the really big one, you know, several different attacks, including this several meters long lizard-like tongue that, you know, shoots out and, like, yeah, you know, hits around, it just, yeah, so cool. And, you know, then, yeah, then I get the sonic gun, which, yeah, I, I tested a few times on a few different enemies. It seems kind of useless. And the, you know, yeah, as I proceed through the level, I reprogram the refinery to produce an antidote to the sleeping toxin. And the, let's see, yeah, and I disabled the machine producing toxin. And, let's see. And this, I reached the first set of electrified floors. Ah, I forgot to mention those in the regular MOA. Oh, anyway. It'll be a surprise. And the and, and that is something I really appreciate. The electrified floors, you legitimately cannot touch these for more than a few seconds without losing so much health that you get captured. I really appreciate it. That is legitimately something that is challenging. You have to avoid touching the electrified floors. You know, the floor isn't lava, but it is electric. And, you know, I, yeah, and I use the antidote, I use the antidote on two or three machines that produce toxin. And, yeah, by the end of this, you know, Dr. X and Professor Angreen will not be able to produce more toxin. This was the only lab, and I stopped people getting equipment scientists. And, yeah, and, and this is where I run into the... I, I run into the first skull bot, and the computer doesn't know anything about it yet. Given that everything else I've run into it had some information about, this is a very cool new development. You know, it's like, I don't even know what this, please stay away from this thing. We don't know what it can do, you know. And, and the thing is easy to outrun as far as it's AR. And I place the three disruptors on the radar tower, stop the already taking off propellers active heli lift, and you know, the remote trigger and the propellers explode, which that makes sense. And it crashes into the door that I came through, so I have to use the drill that I just happened to pick up when I planned the disruptors. And, you know, I drill and then the truck leaves and Gangren tells me it's full of toxin so that, you know, again, they can't produce more, but I still have to, they, they still got some toxin, so I have to stop that and, yeah. And, you know, and, and Gangrene sends the spider tank, this giant robot, at me. And the, you know, and yeah, it's, it's like I talked about in the, the boss segment, you know, fire the AR and it, so it's briefly stunned. And it gives this very animalistic, that hurt movement. And, you know, I go and attach and dis detonate a disruptor. And it attacks me to these green area of effect energy blasts that knock me down. They fly in an arc, meaning they can hit me even if I'm hiding behind one of the rocks. And also fire these green rockets, but they don't knock me down or fly in an arc. And this thing really does walk a lot like a spider. You know, it, it only has the four legs, but it really, yeah. And every so often it'll stand still and lay an explosive barrel, walk a few steps away from it, making it harder, giving me less room to avoid its attack by running in a circle around it. It's, yeah, clearly they put effort into it, you know, again, I've seen games where the boss enemy was like, we didn't really want to put effort into it, so it moves in a pretty boring way, and yeah. The, 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 boss, the boss enemies have personality, you know, there's always something to them that you take away from, I really appreciate that. And... 
and you know gangrene yells that I won't escape at, right after I've defeated and yeah the the cutscene doesn't show me escaping I'm not entirely sure I mean several of the other levels it does the the yeah the ice you know the the very last level you don't see the escape itself but you see what facilitates the escape you know the helicopters and you see action man away from where he was and in the the fourth level where you're at the what was it called the, but the, yeah that base you you see the the cut scene of him getting into the island base yeah i think that's what it's called and then the final one's ice base Moving on to the third level, I forget what it's called, but the, the one where you're flying around the city, and yeah. And, let's see. Oh, I should briefly state, I, I mentioned that I got all but one PowerPoint, although it would not, it, it claimed that I hadn't gotten all of them. The only PowerPoint I didn't get was in the fourth level there was one it was on the deck of the ship and I jumped around and okay there's the missiles there's the you know these crates over. I could not find the last one I I know I have on other plays though but anyway and and yeah you know the in in this level there's some where I need the jetpack I they gave you a jetpack you get to fly a jetpack in this game and fire machine guns from it this is awesome I think the, the this level might be smaller than the the ground vehicle one, and that really helps because in this one it seems like you do have to catch and stop the the trucks in time. But I mean, I never did let one of them, excuse me, really get close to escaping. I guess so. I yeah, and and I you know the the jetpack you really can't tell it. Its weapons are just not as powerful, and if I recall, the range is also smaller of, of its weapons, which makes sense, you know. So, yeah, you do really have to, if, if you're not using the, the regular helicopter, yeah. Now, the, yeah, and, yeah, I'm trying to stop the, the toxin truck then that, that escaped from the, the desert base, and they, you know, the content has been split over several trucks, and in this level it's it's annoying that there aren't real rise or lower control keys the game kind of rises or lowers when you bump into a building because you're too low or if you wait in a too high hiding spot in a too high spot to get low and the jetpack is bad at rising directly into the air for going over buildings and yeah terribly armed but much faster and more responsive and the when the the trucks that are airlifted you it's it's a lot easier to get them with the helicopter the, the trucks themselves don't have a lot of armor but the helicopters lifting them do have a lot and there are four trucks and they just drive if they're not airlifted they they don't stay in place unless they're about to be airlifted and there are sam sites on top of rooftops so yeah parts of this city are just under control of dr x's forces you know clearly but then I don't know. I mean, again, maybe it is not the same city. I mean, the the it's possible that Action Man has several bases around the world, and this city is close to the desert base, and thus in an area that just. But it it looks like a regular city. It doesn't like look like abandoned or something. But I I don't remember offhand if there were NPCs that are not enemies in it. But you know, I fight both helicopters and cars. And really, there, there are not very many vehicular levels in the level. It, vehicular enemies in the level is most just SAM sites. And let's see. And, and, you know, at the end, you get to use the gyrocopter, which is so cool. And, you know, I use the spotlight to, you know, blind the, the speedster and, you know, then shoot him. And, yeah, the... the after you know, I at, at the end after after I've stopped the trucks, he says, I had the la I have the last of the toxin, you have to stop my car. And yeah, you know, and, and the you know, then when I defeat him, he's he just says all the trucks were a distraction. And you know, yeah, Action Man says, Well now I know Dr. X's plan, but you kinda did before the, the level, you know, 
at the end of the previous level. So this is the one level where you do, do not actually accomplish anything. And I, I don't think it was necessary for that to be the case. I just have like a tracking device on the Speedstress car that I used to find the base of the next level. That's, you know, that is what happens in level five anyway. And in that one, you're not, you're not stopping anything. You're just, you're, you're getting the, the tracking device that is there. So they might as well have just had two tracking devices instead of two times of, well, the toxin that Dr. X needed is in another castle. I mean, is already either on its way there or he already has it, you know. And... But, but yeah, you know, this was when I noted that every single level, it's it tells me you have to do at least a little more to stop Dr. X where it doesn't it doesn't feel small every level feels big it feels like you're accomplishing something but just yeah you have this thing of you know you have to do a little more now the let's see moving on to level 4 which i want to say is the isle island base I, f I forget but yeah the the second of the bases you and you know, and and it doesn't actually say how you got to the, how you found out where it was, which and that would also that would have made it would have made sense to at the end of level three do like a flashback that shows that just before the toxin truck left, you know, you didn't see it, but really quickly, Action Man threw like a tracking device onto it, and now the tracking device. It's, you know, has shown him where the base is, where before it showed, like, the... You know, because he's been tracking the other toxin trucks. Yeah, anyway. And, you know, there's the, the cutscene shows I'm arriving via s submarine scuba gear. And, let's see. And, and, yeah, this is where you see, like, this green goop that runs into the sea, which, again, really tells you, man, these are these are bad guys, you know. And, you know, you, this is where I fan, meet the, the robot dogs, one of which I beat into exploding, and you have the searchlight from the, the cameras, and, you know, I, I, I really noticed the, the base is protected by a lot more high-tech stuff than the desert one, so again, it feels like, okay, this is a bigger deal than the first one, and this is one that they really needed to, you know, yeah, you know, the the first one, they're, they're protecting this toxin that puts you to sleep. In this one, they're building these robots that are supposed to take over the world. So, yeah, you know, obviously they have a lot of security. And, you know, the... And, and yeah, I, I reached this place where inside there are goop rivers. And, yeah, they do actually hurt you if you fall in. So they are toxic waste. And there's the spy camera... And I actually get to see the photos, which I also appreciate. And, you know, the game does tell you exactly where to use it. And I get the four pictures. And then I meet a, the first skull bot that I can actually destroy. And it's the, the pistol, which just happens to be there. And, you know, if I shoot it with the regular pistol or the sniper, the bullets make makes a ricochet sound. And the bot will ghost for a few steps and then attack again unhurt. And, you know, with the armor-piercing pistol, it's not very many shots. Not in this level, anyway. But, you know, clearly, police would not be able to stop these. You know, maybe SWAT, but the Skullbots are fast and effective. Again, you see why Action Man is needed to stop this. And you know, that's always the, the, the case when you have this kind of game where, you know, this is specific, you know, the, the Splinter Cell games also do a pretty good job, of the, a great job of this, of showing, you know, why is one person doing this? Why is, you know... Why is it not a group of cops doing this? Why does it need to be this special agent? And why is he doing so much of it by himself? You know, which actually in in you know in Blacklist they even call that out. That you know, so you can call audibles in the field all day, but we aren't allowed to execute a plan. You know, yeah, man, I love that. I can't wait to play it again. Anyway, the the yeah, let's see the and and you know the the. Level 4, you have 12 guards to snipe, where level 2 had 8. And, you know, the, the, yeah, the Skullbot Warehouse with the lots of electrically charged floors jumping from crate to crate. 
and I noted that the AR took four shots to take out a skull bullet, so that is, you know, that is more than the the pistol. And 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 this also, you know, you look and you see hundreds of these crates, and early on you see, you know, and, and occasionally will happen that a crate will burst open and there's a skull bot inside. Well, that's you know the the. <laughs> there being hundreds upon hundreds of them means that Dr. X has hundreds of skull bots and again, you know, that's it's and it's not the, the game doesn't sit you down and say Dr. X must have hundreds of skull bots. It's just it's something you realize because you keep seeing them. It's it's a really great use of like subtle storytelling because it's not even you don't necessarily like stop to think there must be hundreds of these boxes. It's just you keep passing them and you know some of them you jump on and, and move past. But there are hundreds of these things. If you don't destroy this base, even if you stop Dr. X at the end of the game. This base still exists with hundreds of skull bots in it, and you know, it, if if someone working for Doctor X takes over the base, they can launch another attack. But because you destroy this base, Doctor X only has the skull bots that were no longer in the base, and yeah. Now, and the you know, you reach the factory entrance and realize you need explosives to destroy the factory. And you can program the stealth jet to drop some on the roof. And, you know, it's it's one of these things where you can carry tons of equipment. Why weren't you carrying explosives too? But, you know, and, and of course the explosives that you pick up, all the, you know, you need maybe 8 or 12 charges. And they're in this one little box that you pick up. But, yeah. You know, you get to the radar. You grab a hook to the roof and avoid spotlights and actually I did get seen by at least one spotlight and they attract like I don't know, five dogs or something so yeah then you know but at the end of the day by by the time that happened I had everything that I wanted I I got spotted picking up the last of the power points and this was after I picked up the explosive so I was just running back anyway and I could get away from the dogs but yeah I, I have played it other times where I got spotted earlier and yeah you it's hard not to end up getting captured. Now the and and you know there's the I hide in a crate picked up by a mech that moves crates and it looks like it's completely automatic AI driven. And you know I'm blowing up the Skullbot factory. You know four C C four charges to place an area and you know and and then you have the that one place where there's this middle grate bridge over fire and the fire reaches up through some which I mean it must be really miserable walking you know patrolling that place you have to be careful not to walk over the bridge at certain times or you will literally you know be be burned like that yeah that's yeah anyway the and and the end of the bridge has a shield guard close to it who isn't hurt by fire so he you know he runs up and when I try to kick him I get hurt by the fire yeah and this is where you get the, like the spotlight cameras with ARs mounted on them and the four you know I treat the C4 all four explosions vibrate the controller and skull button assembly I place more C4 and and I also also really appreciate that these areas have the four C4 charges on the HUD and they're see-through when you place one of them, so you know how much is left. And yeah, then I, yeah, it's it's eight total. And you know the cutscene, I go through. You know the cutscene. He's going back through the sewer. Does that mean he ran the whole way back while the place was exploding? Or or wait, no, sorry, I'm thinking of a different. Part. Yeah, yeah, we do see him use the the sewer one, but and and you know the cutscene. I encounter Doctor X for the first time and not the last time. And this is the first time I even hear his voice, you know, more than halfway through the game. He's been referred to by lots of people before, but I only met Professor Gangreen at the end of level two, a third of the way through the game. That's doing a really good job of spacing them out, not overloading. Again, they could so easily have just dumped all of them on you. But instead, you know, and in this cutscene is also where you meet Max X, but and and then there are all the skull bots and the mech, and really 
Dr. X, who you've already heard referenced, Max X and the Mech are the only new ones, just that there are Skullbots there also, who you already know. And the, let's see, and, and Dr. X explains, you know, can detonate missiles of toxin, putting everyone to sleep, unleash the Skullbot army, already in position, hidden around the world, people will wake up too late to stop him. Which, you know, literally, you know, the master plan involves hitting Earth with tons of toxin and a massive robot army. That is awesome. And, yeah, it it makes sense. You know, there are a lot of villain plans and stuff like this that, you know, oh, that, that sounds like a really bad thing. To, I, I, forget, I think it was Crack that had, like, an article about how villains, essentially, in fiction, they exist to give the bad, to, to give the good guy a plan that he has to stop and to the the yeah just in order to give the good guy something to do and thus a lot of villain plans don't make a lot of sense but in this one yeah it makes sense and all these different moving parts that you learn one by one and that you work to stop one by one yeah and you know max x uses toxin to knock me out and i'm escaping from jail you know, that's the one time that the jail is plot related and, you know, you find out you're on the ship that the missiles will be launched from and, let's see, you know, and, and in the hold where, you know, all the spotlight cameras with gun emplacements, if you don't watch their patterns, they're tough to completely avoid, but you do have to at least until the, the very end of it and yeah I got captured three times on this and this are also in part because I was a real stickler for getting every single PowerPoint which yeah that makes it harder but and then you know before you pick up your equipment the only thing that they left you with was the tape recorder to save your game and you know, then I encounter the mech the which is you know and, and this is where I have to turn on the water at the edge of the small room to defeat it overloading the electrical systems. I'm very lucky that the electrified water doesn't hurt me. And that there is a valve right there in the room that has the mech. But, you know, I'm using the AR gun to stun it. And the mech has missiles and Gatling guns. And the stomp attack with a you know, small area of effect. Again, really badass. You know, every single robot, major robot that you fight in this has some kind of really badass attack. You know, the... the the, the big spider would lay eggs, you know, or prox mines. The, this one stomps, and, you know, Dr. X himself has the, the claws, yeah. And I do, and this is another level where, you know, it's kind of hard to tell when to turn around, when not to. And honestly, it's like every other time that I have stunned the mech fully, I can't actually turn the valve. But, you know, at the end, the mech explodes really satisfyingly with a horrible roar, not entirely unlike the giant mutant plant. And, let's see, yeah, and I open the two missiles and electronics kit to disable them. And, and I get the, the taser gun and, you know, three shots of a knockdown, knockdown guard, so it has the effects that martial arts has. But, yeah, it's really, it's a little lame. And you know, the missile silo, I clamp the missiles into position with the electronics kit, and it's four times in a row, so I really appreciate that you're not forced to use the kit every single time. You just have to click activate, and yeah. And, you know, yeah, and, and this is... And every time I climb the, the missile, there's an, a cutscene, a short cutscene of the auto switch, and then a short cutscene of the kit. And both times you have to select and then use, instead of just doing both immediately in a row. Really, I feel like they could have just faded. Like, you, you press, you know, activate, and then, you know, a brief fade, and then you see that it's done, and then you move on to the next one, but yeah. And then, yeah, and after all four, I press switch and lock all four in place, and this is the the place where I have to stop several shield guards that have accumulated and use the sniper. One sniper bullet actually took out two, so yeah, it's extremely useful here. Now, the... Yeah, and, and at this point, it's, you know, after after that, the, the claiming the missiles in place, the, you know, then I collect the last of the code key, 
And now I press the, you know, in, in the color code order, like in level two, but much later in the mission, so they didn't copy paste the mission design. And yeah, I press them all and press another switch. Everything starts exploding and go on to the stern and meet Max X. And he fights me, which means he must be a real zealot not to just flee the exploding ship. I mean, surely he knows that I wouldn't kill him, that, that Action Man only captures his enemies. So, yeah, but, yeah, he's... And he fights me in the Jump Jet X, which must be an amazing toy if they actually had that as a toy. But, yeah. And, you know, and he says he's sure the Skull Butts can win without the toxin. And, you know... Which is also a good point. You know, it is like, I mean, the, the other than Action Man, you know, the, the, it would still be a very difficult thing to do to stop the, you know, and I mean, even if they, the, 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 like, you know, we, we don't know for sure, but I, if like, someone other than Action Man found out where these bases were and like tried to bomb them or something. We don't see it, but probably there's some kind of security against that. You know, I mean, dude places SAM sites on buildings in the city. You know, clearly he's, he's planned for this kind of stuff. Yeah. And you know, Action Man, of course, retorts, I can stop him. You're not going to be around to do anything, to stop anything. And you know, I use the taser gun to to railgun mode, taking out the jet engines, forcing it to land, and it's one of those where you have to charge it before you fire. And if I run up to the jet, the force created by the jets knock me back. And, you know, he flies side to side, firing machine guns and missiles like the mech, which is a little repetitive. And, I mean, it's, it's twice in the same level, then, that you have this exact same, that's, yeah. You know, com comparatively, the I'd say the, the fighting the the mutant plant and fighting the robot spider, I would say are more distinct from each other. And let's see, in the last level, you fight the exosuit. What's the other thing you fight? What's the first boss in the final level? Man, it hasn't been that long since I played it. Ah, maybe I'll I'll get to it when I yeah when I get to that in the notes. And, yeah, you know, once he's down by a third of health, he flies by dropping two huge bombs. I have time to escape the blast, but I have to hug the wall opposite the wall where I stand for the rest of the time. And, you know, first I do the engine on both sides, and the rotor in the back and the bottom. And, and you know, at the end he crashes, and the crash is repeated from three different angles. That's really cool. And I carry Max away, he's knocked out jump into the water and in front of the submarines, of course I get back safely. And moving on to level five, the, what's it called, ice flow, where you're on the ice and under the, the sea also. And yeah, you know, now I need to find Dr. X's personal hidden base. And this level has goons loaded by the technician, try to recover before I can, tracking device that can be used to find set base. And, yeah, and first I have to collect 20 of the 30 power points, which is, again, level one, the, the first vehicle level, you're, you know, going around, you're stopping individual vehicle enemies. The second one, you're flying around, you're stopping the trucks. And in this one, you're immediately trying to get the power points. So each time, it's a different thing you're, you're doing. And the, yeah, to get 20 of the 30 power points to gain access to the submarine DSV. I have the scuba ski, which has no no machine guns, but it does fire a barrage of missiles. The hovercraft, which fires machine guns and fireballs, and I didn't note I didn't notice a lot of narrow passages here. I actually I, I experienced I I took a lot of damage. This was one where the enemies would kind of crowd. This yeah maybe especially the sam sites. I'm glad the sam sites turn so slowly because they do damage. And yeah, I'm finding missile gun emplacements. I'm, I'm calling them SAM sites. They're they're SAM sites. Hovercraft, speedboats, hydrofoils. Another sea. I fight a submarine that looks like a manta ray and these static underwater mines, which thankfully you can manually blow up. A regular submarine. Another one looks like another underwater creature. I, I don't remember what it's called. 
and I do get all power points before I take the DSV, which is, yeah. And you know, under the sea, the DSV fires missiles relatively fast, and I retrieve five of the six pieces of the homing device. When I get the fifth one, technician tells me he has the sixth one, so I go back up, destroy the enemy's you know, surface defenses, vehicles, not the emplacements, but... And, and at seven when I start, it may have been more before power point collecting if, if I hadn't destroyed a lot of enemies there. So I'm destroying enemy vehicles, lightning level one, but at the end, not the start, again, adding variety. And there's not a lot of U-turning in this level either, so it's easy to go everywhere. And enemies are added to the minimap when I get close. I defeat all seven. Technician tells me he had the final piece the whole time, so I use the DSV to face him. And, you know, he's, supposedly he's the one building robots, but Gangrene didn't just make the mutant plants. He also made the, the giant robot spider and some other robots. I'm almost certain, but... Yeah, you know, the technician has this plasma shield at the front and have to attack him from the sides and behind with, with the slippery controls and the auto-aim. It's pretty annoying. You know, I, I got fairly lucky on this time, which is why it goes fast, but, you know, and he fires lightning bolts at me under the sea. That's awesome. And, you know, the and, and this is one of the... I got all 30 power points, but it only counts 26 in the menu. And the menu also says 190 total when my count for all levels combined comes to 167, which it does admit I have, though the count shouldn't count. Come to that from what it says I have. And finally, level 6, Ice Base, I want to say it's called. I, I do also want to... Just briefly say, I, I really like the level four. You start out at this on this base, and then you end on this giant, like I guess, cruise ship is maybe the the word, but you know that. Yeah, you you start out on the iron base, and I'm fairly certain you actually do end up going back to the start of the level, so you're ready to leave this this whole area. But then they're there to to capture you, which also, I mean, if you're going back to the first place you came. Makes sense, you know, they, they realized you were there because of the guards that were being captured, and then they tried to, you know, try to figure out where where did you come from, and where did you go, and, yeah, they, they realized it must have been there, so they set up a trap, figuring that you'll return, and, you know, they put you on the boat, because in this, everyone captures everyone else, no one ever goes for the lethal option, and... And, and yeah, here at the start of the final level, you know, you have to stop Dr. X's army of Skullbots before it's too late, because they're already attacking, you know, they're, they're attacking cities around the world. So again, you know, you tell a seven-year-old kid, cities around the world are being attacked by robots with armor, you know, oof, I, I gotta stop this, this has to be, you know, again, this is not something that regular like even even like military forces these things are armored you know you you can fire an energy gun at them in this level and it doesn't do any damage you know and that's another thing not only are they armored but you know they can do the the ghosting thing where you can't hit them so yeah it wouldn't be very difficult for them to you know just and, and again you can talk about well dropping bombs from a, well they're not going to do that on cities certainly so you know, not not their own cities anyway and, you know, yeah, I have to destroy the, the power supply to the Skullbot Central computer. And, you know, they're going to collapse like battle droids. And this is where the opening cutscene has me chased by a robot shark. And it's about to fire missiles at me and toss something into its mouth. It falls, stopped. And I drill my way through the ice to get into the base. Dr. X is not making this one easy. And yeah, the most heavily fortified and least accessible base of the three easily. And the, the gray walls and large open spaces are really de dehumanizing, isolating. I just want to see the sun again, you know. And yeah, this is when the wristwatch AI tells me the skullbots are being activated all over the world. I don't have a lot of time. And I snipe the people again at a different point in the level than the first two. And it's the crossbow. And there are like 14 or 16 to shoot this time. So yeah, great increase of... And, you know, there's this large snow-faring tank with a gun emplacement. It's too bad it doesn't see any action, but again, it is like they were ready to, to fight people. And, and it's also, the moment I get in, snipers are on me. You know, even though I came through this, this play and I had to drill through the eyes, it wasn't exactly accessible, there are still immediately snipers on me. You know, yeah, the... the they, they were completely ready for someone to arrive. And it also, at this point in, in the story, would be pretty ridiculous if they didn't expect Action Man to show up. And, 
you know, yeah, and I have to find the, the passkey again at a different point in the other levels. But they, they did kind of just swap the first code key search and the sniper guards from level 2 for level 6. And I get the infinite ammo energy gun, and there are more skull bots, and, you know, yeah, the energy gun is useless against them. It ricochets somehow, at least that's the, the sound played, and the same for the crossbow. And if I get close to a skull bot, it'll uppercut me. That's really awesome. Like, man, that's gotta hurt being up, getting an uppercut by a robot like that. But yeah, I I get captured one time because several skull bots in the one small area, and 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 the jail looks mostly the same. But it is the guard type from this level in the cutscene. I believe that's the case. You know, regardless of which of the three third person segment levels you get captured in the the guard appearance will be that of the the guards in that level and the you know and then there's the, the habitation a and b with you know barracks beds showers and and the guards here have this dehumanizing helmet with like red eyes and you know you're told these are the most dangerous guards and it's still not that many bullets to take them down from the pistol but you know I have to wonder, like, maybe the red eyes are like the emerald glass in the Wizard of Oz. Excuse me, and that's why the, the you know they can stand working in this gray, you know, area. And yeah, and and then I get into the the corridor with you know flames on both sides. I guess that's to make it difficult to get through. They didn't seem to have any real purpose. Where like in the in the Skullbot factory, I could maybe see there they have something burning down there for some reason. Maybe like to melt certain metals to to mold them for the robots. Maybe something, but here it is like just flame. But it would make sense for them to be just to make it difficult for someone like Action Man to get in. And they don't affect the enemies, but you know the enemies are fairly far away from me at this point. And you know, at least one of the guards, it seems like four or five shots from the AR to take out. And sometimes also four or five from the pistol. But sometimes only two. It's some of some bullets stun lock and then he can't get hurt until the stun lock is up. And and then there, you know, the the lasers blocking your path. Which I also really appreciate that again, you can't get into an area that's completely wrong. There are, there are a couple of times where I ended up going back to the area I just came from, but that's, you know, that's fine. You immediately realize, oh, I was just here, and go back through the, yeah. And... the Yeah, and I use a disruptor on the generator, and a secondary emergency power source takes over, which has a actually my switch to his backup plan, a virus to destroy the Skullbot's central computer, which means I need to find the intelligence chip to help create this virus, and you've got alarms going off, electricity, and the laser grid is down since I just took out the power, you know, the power source, which the, the power source isn't powering everything, it's, so, yeah, it's not powering the, the laser grid anymore. And, and and at this point, I do kind of realize what I've done up to this point in this level hasn't actually really affected anything. You know, the big thing was taking out the, the generator and taking that out didn't actually, you know, it just, the other thing took over. It's only, it, the, the, the virus is what ultimately is, you know, is, is what stops them. And I hadn't started that until around here, around the halfway point, because this is when I meet the, the first of the, the boss enemies. You know, and I also appreciate that, you know, halfway through level, in a third person segment level, you fight one boss, and then at the end of the level, you fight another boss, so that, you know, you, you get to feel you're making progress. And... You know, and, and this is when Gangrene sends these robot insects at me, really, really cool. And, you know, each type of insect has a different attack. And the energy gun is converted to ice gun mode. I love that. That's... Who would even think to make, like, ice gun mode for the, for the energy gun? You know, and it's... I want to say it's like Jake from the... I forget his last name, but, you know, who's on Drawfee sometimes. 
pointed out, you know, in only in video games would you have ice bullets, you know, those weapon man weapons manufacturers in real life would never make a bullet that, you know, as as he pointed out, it's not gonna kill your enemy, but it's gonna slow him down for a few seconds, you know. And let's see, but but yeah, you know, I I freeze the insects one by one and go up and punch them to destroy them. I I punch robots to you know these one don't. It's not even about like punching them so much that they end up exploding. You know, but no, just punch them and they fall apart. You know, and the you know before they defrost and if if you're most of the time they're not going to have time to defrost. And you know, shooting is instantaneous with no charge up, and the camera moves like the regular third person se segments. And you know, and the insects will fly around in you know if you move in certain ways. And you know, the flies will rush, the scorpions will rush and drop an area of effect large bomb unless it seems like if I were to be knocked down, it doesn't seem like it's going to drop the bomb, but it drops them like the Nod bomber jet, and I want to say Tiberian Sun. And they really do move a lot like insects, and they're not like standing still. They're, they're like buzzing around. And, yeah. And they have to sort of land before I can hit them. And sometimes I can hit them as they're doing the attack, which is really cool. And you know, first you fight a few small ones, a few at a time, and there's a health bar for a big wasp. And then some more sh smaller ones, and more, you know, big ones with the, yeah. And let's see. Yeah, and this is the part where I use the infrared goggles I already mentioned. That's, yeah. And I fight three to five skull bots, at least three at a time, which again ends up getting me captured once. And this is also where, you know, you can see your breath from the cold air in a lot of this level. Even inside, I mean, I guess it could be cold in here too. And, you know, really, the for all we know, the, the guards have some kind of, like, thick, like, so they're not running around cold, which really makes... In that case, Action Man must definitely be cold because he's not wearing something like really bulky that yeah. And and I get to the place with a ton of electrified floor and you know you get to a stairwell, get an AI chip part, and set the floor to disable for a path to the next stairwell. Again, this is something that really only makes sense in a video game. I mean, are we to think that every time the the you know scientists working on the robots have to move between places, one of them has to press Excuse me, a button at their workstation. Or something. Yeah, and you know the and and just I I kind of love when when you have ones like this where part of the the thing will be safe for you to walk on, and then another part, and then another part, and you have to consistently follow. You know, one of the Penumbra games has this, and just yeah, I I kind of love it. Um, although in that one I die a lot, but yeah. And you know, and then, and then on the last one, I turn off the floor, and the two skull bots that were standing off the, the floor before are now you know run up there, and you know I destroy them. And the second one drops the last code key. Now I have the full AI chip and the full code key, so I go back to the storage and enter the area that needed the code key. Which again, I feel like I'm making progress. You know, so so many times in video games, you reach a closed door. And not enough times does it tell you you need this for that door, and then later you actually get that thing. And and again, whenever the code keys in the game, they're basically they're a fairly easy way to get the player to feel like he's making progress. But they do work. And let's see. Yeah, and then I get to the you know, and and then I'm told by the the AI that the skullbot you know I get to the map room skullbot attacks are intensifying around the world you know so I I don't have a lot of time and you know I get yeah this is the room where there's the the one bridge you know there, there are bridges to a few areas one of them needs to be raised before I can access it the one that leads to Doctor X you know and I can actually go to the satellite dish already but I'm not gonna I can't do anything there but it's not like I waste a lot of time going there and back and I can also go back to the area I just came from which I do once by accident and I, then I go to the skullbot control it, it is out of control in there and 
you know, I need gain access to the central computer core, reprogram will create the virus. And, you know, you've got electricity running along floors that need to jump over three places each time turning off a laser grid, which the game calls defense fields for some reason. And, you know, each place that I deactivate one has a health pack. And then I go to the last part of the area, which has the laser grids, red, blue, and green. In front of it, I put the complete AI chip and then use the electronics kit one of the last times, probably one of the last time, and you know, lots of vibrations from explosions. I need to transmit the virus to the world via the satellite dish. And so I go there and it's snowing out there and I realign the by pressing X, vibration that it realigns, and I use the electronics kit. So I think that's the last time I use it and activate it and it transmits. But Dr. X is blocking the signal with his new robot arm, and that's also, you know. You, you do notice that if you're paying attention in level four, he has a like neon green robot arm. And now when I reach him here, he has this metallic gray robot arm. So yeah, he got a new robot arm between the two levels. And it's a way to sell toys, but it does also actually, again, they made it matter. He has a new robot arm and it's blocking the signal. And, you know, yeah, I the only way to stop the Skullbots will be to defeat Dr. X so I can disable his robot arm. You know, he's not going to let me do that without, so yeah. And the bridge raises and I get into the dome elevator. And, you know, actually my notes, this must be the elevator of Dr. X, but there's no power, so I have to reroute. And it's one of those things, again, it makes no sense for the rerouting to work like this, but it's a video game and it just, it, yeah, for that it works very nicely. You know, you have to go to that round th thing in the, the center of the room, press, avoiding all the, the electricity and, you know, turns off the electric from, from one of the floors, go over there, press, go back to the thing, and yeah. You know, the, the power taken out since I destroyed the main generator, the backup isn't for this since Doc Wright doesn't, he doesn't need to use the elevator right now, as we find out briefly, he actually, he has his own. And, let's see, yeah, and after four of them, I, you know, the elevator works, and, let's see, and, yeah, and I, I usually reach, reach Dr. X in the glass dome, and he's sitting on a chair, and you see the new robot arm, and his chair is an elevator that takes him under the floor, and he shatters the glass dome above us, and, you know, you just see darkness up there, and there's a little glass left at the bottom. I guess, you know, it looks like it's, it would prevent me from falling. I didn't try. And, you know, suddenly he's in the exo armor and bag. It, it feels like it wouldn't make sense. They, they like to do this at the end of the, the third person segment levels. Just have things explode around you and then not necessarily show what happens next. But in this one, you know, yeah, suddenly he's back. I guess there was another elevator or maybe that elevator took him to where he put the suit on and then it went back up or something but I love the exo armor I really do it's it's such a cool this is such an important the final boss fight in a lot of games it, it needs to make a lasting impression this is the the last you know not every game ends with a big boss fight but certainly you you want your game to end on something big and it's not necessarily going to be a boss fight but you want that last impression to really last and yeah you know he's got the electrified claws on the left arm like Wolverine but there's two and there's bright yellow and they have the cool sound effect I would have loved to have this thing as a toy and excuse me yeah the, the cool sound effects similar to like the X-Men Saturday morning cartoon for Wolverine's claws from when he you know moves them and they slice their stuff and such and they can send off what looks like little flames short distance, and then he has the plasma pulse. Now you use the energy gun on high pro mode to stun him and then attack the power pack on the back of his armor. So like a bigger version of the final boss of level two. And the, the gun has a short charge up and he has an energy shield that I'm hurting, not him himself, when I fire. And if I go close to him, he slices at me with the, I really, I love the sound of him. Thing. And every so often he'll roar in a very inhuman way and then fire the right arm gun for Mega Man in a 90 degree arc and 
he, he reminded me a lot of Admiral Fyar in Jedi Knight 2 and somewhat like Dingo Dial in Crash Bandicoot Warped. And, you know, I can't hit him if I'm too far away either, and he walks fairly fast. He's hard to outrun. And that's also something I really appreciate about this one. Some of the other third-person segment bosses, they kind of stay where they are and they attack with ranged attacks. This, and it, this is the, one, the only one that really chases you around. No matter how much you run around the, the level, he will just walk right up to you and attack you. So, just, yeah. And, and the camera focuses on him, which does mean that I can walk out of frame, which is a little annoying. And when the armor is you know, out of the shield, I walk up behind it and I literally punch the back. That is just awesome. And, you know, he'll fly up into the air and land with a shock wave. And, let's see. And, and in the suit, he's the height of two, maybe two and a half action man. You know, yeah. Very cool final boss fight. And he's more intense than any of the others, but he's fought in a similar way to the others. So it's tougher than before, but in a way that you can understand. That's another thing. Too many boss fights. At the end, just suddenly you have to do something. It's like, what, what am I supposed to do? And... Okay, I'm supposed to do it way faster than before, and like, yeah. I really, the the final boss of Beyond Good and Evil, which is overall, I like a lot about that game, but it is really frustrating. The final boss, it's suddenly, at the very, very end of the final boss, it's like, how, how am I supposed to, it doesn't feel intuitive to the, the rest of, yeah, anyway. And... Yeah, and after three times fighting him and punching him, punching his back, he fires these big bubbles. Maybe these are what the AI calls plasma bolts from the arm gun, and they'll knock me down. Really, all his attacks will. And you know, six times I find him and punch his back. And the seventh, you know, I I go yeah, through the yeah the, the shield, which keeps coming back at a slightly less power each time I punch it. Yeah, the, the seventh time I, I go, I punch through the shield. I'm told to use the, rather that I eliminate the shield. I'm told to use the crossbow, which is almost out of ammo. I, I guess it would spawn more if I ran out. I, I forget. I think I, other times I have fired too many, but yeah, you know, to attack the weak point of Doctor X's armor on the back, and you know, I, I fail to do this at least once because I'm just not far enough away. I've run away from him too far, so I'm at the edge of the dome. And he's right close to me, so you know you know you can't. If, yeah, if you've played this, you know that you can't raise the, the sniper weapons too high up. You have to be far enough away for that to yeah. And and I also noted that staying on his right seems useful for dodging his attacks, who that, that tend to go or and or stay left. And it's really hard to run left far enough to dodge the arm gun. It, you know, unlike politically, where it's very easy to move to the left. You know, he'll just readjust his aim to follow you. But yeah, you know, I, I stop me and I shoot the, with the crossbow. It's over, X. You and your skull butts are finished. And, you know, and, and then these several, like, I guess the gyrocopter, so several of those fly up to the glass dome. Do I have people working, like, with or for me? Are are they remote controlled by the AI, like the jet I used for the explosives in level four? I I feel like that might have been a good thing to just briefly explain because that's like, where did this come from? That's it's it's one of the few things in the game where it's just this out of nowhere. And you see a brief clip of the skull bots in the city, or they're keeling over one of them, knocks into a sign, bending it, you know, street sign or something, and. Again, really highlighting these these things would be really dangerous if not stopped. And you know, yeah, they were attacking cities, and now they're not because I I stopped Doctor X, disabled his robot arm, the signal got sent, the virus has been spread to the skullbots all over the globe. Any skullbots that were in position are now disabled. They can't build more skullbots. The the toxin was all. Yeah, what ended up happening with? Did, did I manage to stop the last of the toxin in the... Yeah, Max X said that we wouldn't need the toxin, so yeah. And, you know, yeah. I, I put Dr. X in jail and, you know, the, the hand... Yes! You know, just... 
yeah, really nice. And you know, the end credits have the main menu theme, but the techno beat behind it, really cool. And after the initial run of credits, they show what I think are like the developers as children, maybe the developers' kids, but yeah, and it was something. And the last one is an Action Man figure, and it says, you know, Action Man, and then instead of what he did as a you know, programmer or whatever, it, it says Alex Mann, yeah. Or, or maybe it's the other way around, but yeah. And yeah, to just briefly plot. They put Dr. X in the exact same kind of cell they've been putting Action Man in. And I was going to say, which won't be as cool of a role reversal if you complete this without ever getting captured, but you are captured once for plot in level 4. Hopefully Action Man's security is better than Dr. X's, and, and or hopefully Dr. X, who we know has some advanced tag inside that robot arm blocking the signal that I used to send the virus, doesn't have a blowtorch like the one they never take away from Action Man. I don't capture Professor Gangling, so he's still out there at the end of the last level, but he is the only, you know, lieutenant brought up that is not all captured. And, you know, one, it could be, you know, maybe in, if they had made a sequel to this, which, I mean, if somehow someone is like, you know what, you know what game we should make a sequel to, and they pick this, I will buy it, I will play it, I promise you that. But yeah, you know, then it could have been that Professor Gangrene frees Dr. X, you know, a la Mystique helping Magneto out in X-Men 2, you know. So, yeah, and again, it is this thing, there's nothing, every single part of Dr. X's plan, I have stopped now. You know, there's nothing left that he can just pick up and immediately launch another attack. So... Yeah, a sequel could have picked up some years later, and he's worked on a new plan, and yeah, something like that. And that was what I had, and this took longer than I thought it would. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, because, man, I love these games. You know what, actually... I don't know, sometimes it shows like the game next to the, the you know, with, with the video and like this is the game they were talking about, would you like to buy it? But in case it doesn't, and in case you don't, for whatever reason, you don't look up the, you know, I just want to show the, the cover. And before I even say, the reason I'm doing this at the very end is because sometimes this screws up the, the focus. And I didn't want that to happen at the start of the video. So maybe you can't see anything of what I'm about to show you, but let's see. If I hold it, yeah, you know, you see oops, Dr. X with the intense eyes, and one of them is like red, so, you know, again, I don't know the, the cartoons, but I can imagine. I think some of the, the figures, it looks like he has a robot eye, and certainly on some of them, he has like a, you know, what's it called? Like, like a pirate covering the eye, yeah. And let's see, you've got, you know, you've got the, the silver speeder, I think it's called, which you drive on the first level. You know, gangrene with the hair and Max X. Oh, I forgot. It's got purple hair, also like punk rock. Yeah, and, and you know, it's clear, to, you know, Action Man's the good guy with the, the glasses and it's got the. And I, I do remember the glasses from at least some of the figures. You, you got the glasses and you could put the glasses on him. It's really cool. And you got the logo, you got the, the body armor, and he's standing there like, I'm going to stop you, Mr. Dr. X, and just badass. And yeah, none of these. Images are big enough for them to, to you're not going to be able to see anything, so I can't show you, but yeah, just, yeah, I love this game, and I 100% get people who didn't, because it definitely has some bad design, but man, is it fun. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.